their show and what it gets right about telling Native American stories. Plus, the terrific Julie Andrews visited Studio 1A this morning. And later, we're going to celebrate the birthday of a Hollywood icon, Meryl Streep. That's all ahead, but let's start with today's pop start headlines from Chanel. Can we talk about Stranger Things? Yes. Okay. A new trailer is out for volume two of the hit series, fourth season, and it features, you guessed it, in honor of Savannah, Kate Bush's um, breakout 80s jam, yes. running up that hill. The second half of this season is being broken down into two supersized episodes. Okay, so if you're a fan, the first will run an hour and 20 minutes, and the finale is slated for a whopping two hours and 20 oh, minutes. Wow. And look at this, by the looks of the new trailer, fans can expect season four to continue bringing on the darkness as the Hawkins gang takes on Vecna in the Upside Down. But I have this terrible feeling. It might not work out for us this time. It is over. Now I just want you to watch. Okay, so apparently you're going to want to sleep with the lights on after this. One. <laughs> All, All right. you need to start streaming July 1st on Netflix. I started season four. Yes. It's, it's, it's solid. Yeah. It's so good. Very everybody dark. says yes, it's dark. It's very, it's very dark. dark. Very dark. Very dark. But everybody who watches it loves yeah. it. All right, next up, Michael J. Fox. Yesterday, the beloved actor was named on the Oscars list of honorary recipients for this year's Governor's Award. This fall, Fox will receive the Gene Herschelt Humanitarian Award for his advocacy work with Parkinson's disease and research. The actor was diagnosed with the condition more than 30 years ago. He was 29 at the time. In a statement, the Academy praised Fox, saying his, quote, boundless optimism exemplifies the impact of one person and changing the future for millions. I like that. Fox will receive his Oscar alongside fellow honorary recipients, filmmaker who's on policy, musician Diane Warren, and director Peter Weir. The Governor's Awards are scheduled for November 19th. All right, next up, Legacy. The oh. true story, I know, mm -hmm. of the L.A. Lakers. The Lakers are back in the small screen spotlight. This is a new docuseries that's headed to Hulu following HBO's wildly popular scripted show, Winning Time. That one, starring uh, Quincy Isaiah, John C. Riley, and Adrian Brody, L.A.'s real ballers are taking center stage in this new mm -hmm. project. Again, it's called Legacy. Mm -hmm. It's set to follow the rise of real estate tycoon Jerry Buss's Showtime-era team and explore the drama they face on and off the court. So the first trailer mm -hmm. is packed with some of the franchise's biggest names. LeBron James, Shaquille O'Neal, Magic Johnson, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, just to name a few. Take a look. They would turn down the lights and say, it's showtime. It wasn't showtime, it was greatness. Jerry Buss was the director, Magic's the star, and it was a huge hit. It was so simple. We have a terrific team. We just play the right word. Dr. Buss came up with the Laker girls. And all of a sudden, there was entertainment all through the league. I can't think of any other owner who has made such an impact on the NBA. And then the business of basketball kicked in. There's a family feud brewing over who will run the Los Angeles Lakers. There's never enough success to go around. That's what it is. It is the real life secession. That's there you go. Sorry, you sold. Yeah. So, and see, wow. a lot of people don't know about what happened behind mm -hmm. the scenes, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Constant family drama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Constant Good. family drama. Well, so no official release date has been announced. It's a 10 part series. Oh, wow. 10 wow. part. Like The Last Dance. Yeah. Yes. Oh, she that's right. Me watch it. I never yeah. regret it. You remember it. that? It was like so must good. see Yeah. Wow. All right. Stop. Next up, <clears throat> let's talk about the minions. Steve Carell's worlds are colliding in a new featurette with the lovable little yellow guys. Carell's animated character grew. And the whole Minion gang recreated the office's famous opening credit sequence. <laughs> but there's a twist. They've turned the Scranton Paper Company into Dunder Minion Evil <laughs> Company Incorporated. Take a peek. The Rise of Gru is in theaters next month. And coming up, we'll have much more on the film. One of the stars, mm -hmm. Dame Julie Andrews. Mm -hmm. She'll be here live. You guys yeah. are talking. We got a little sneak peek of Minions. It's yes. great. It's really good. It's really My kids love it, too. I heard them laughing out loud. Funny. Yeah. All right. Finally, 
Beyonce. Following Break My Soul's release, Beyonce's new single is breaking the internet. In just the last 24 hours, the Beehive has been lighting up social media and praising the dancing track from her upcoming album, Renaissance. Actress Carrie Washington echoed the cries of the masses, simply tweeting, praise B. Grammy and Oscar winning drummer Questlove put his stamp of approval on the track, writing online, this, Craig, is the song of the summer. He called it. He called it yesterday. what you said. And guys, even former First Lady Michelle Obama jumped in, tweeting, Queen Beyonce, you've done it again. Break My Soul is the song we all need right now, and I can't help but dance and sing along while listening to it. Have you had a chance to hear it? Just yes. Have it. It's a terrific song, and I think it really speaks to how everyone's feeling in this moment. Mm. It's like it's time to turn the beat around. And, and find that's what some it's joy. Gives. Yes. It's about joy. She's got it. She's yeah. found it. She's while found you, it. While you were talking yeah. about finding the yeah. joy, look yeah. who just. More joy. Yay. Look, look, joy. look who stepped into the studio. She's here. Julie. Oh, oh, wow. Right, wow. no. right. We are great. Hello, everybody. Good morning. So Come on. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, you're twins. I know. I wanted to. Like twinning. Oh, well, how did we know? How did we know? <laughs> We're so happy to have you visiting us today. We have Thank so you. much to talk about. You got an incredible honor just a couple of weeks ago. Two I years did, in the making. I did. A lot to discuss. But we'll we'll be back with Miss Julian just a little bit. Uh, and you're working uh, with the minions too. So much to talk about. <laughs> That's the latest you need to know from today. Still to come, we're catching up with Ed Helms and his Rutherford Falls co-stars. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. The Peacock show Rutherford Falls follows the goings on in a small northeastern town that borders a Native American reservation. It's been touted as a breakthrough in representation on and behind the camera with six Native writers. And the cast told us why their storytelling is so important. Rutherford Falls, in a nutshell is it's a small northeastern town with some kind of uh, colonial pride that exists on the border of the fictional Minashanka reservation the communities interact with each other and they work together and they have conflicts as well the show kind of dives into the politics behind whose land is whose and who founded the town. I think it is something where it's like there's a wonderful small town comedy, but within that there's incredible themes of revisionist history and uh, native joy and uh, reclaiming identity and redefining identity. Uh, it's a really, it, it, there's a lot of complex themes, uh, but that just gets delivered in a palatable, lighthearted, hilarious and heartfelt comedy. A bunch of years ago, Lawrence Rutherford wrote and signed a legally binding agreement with the Minnesonka. That's why this town exists. That's why all of you exist, okay? Lawrence Rutherford is our forefather. He's our Adam and Eve, our, our Tigris and Euphrates. And that statue, which sits on my family's land, commemorates all that he gave us. 
you don't get that, well, you're just an ungrateful boob. Yeah. I think in season one, we, you know, explored the Nathan character and this concept of his legacy. We kind of blow it up by the end of the of the season. And you also watch characters like Terry and Regan really level up and get what they've been sort of fighting for for many, many years. And so in season two, it's a real kind of fun exploration of what does it feel like when you're starting from scratch and you have to kind of build a legacy for yourself? And then also what happens when you do have it all and get what you want? And is that sometimes harder than, than having to start over again? Um, we really leaned into the ensemble. I feel like we really got to explore and find out how funny these characters are and different dynamics that we enjoyed and dynamics we hadn't tried yet. And so it's a real sort of, there's a lot of romance and a lot of silliness this year. And I'm just really excited for people to see it. I think that um, comedy is inviting. To generate laughter for people is a gift. I think also, you know, specifically for Native people and Native storylines, we have been relegated to drama historically in this industry. And so it's been actually very fun and easy to elevate us into a, a comedy space and to utilize the, the writing of other Native comedians and non-Native comedians. I always think of this quote from Judd Apatow where he said, when someone's laughing, it's the only time I'm sure that they don't hate me and so, or something like that. I might have butchered it a little bit, but it speaks to a greater beauty and truth about comedy and especially comedic storytelling, which is you can tell stories about awful characters or characters that make awful mistakes. And Nathan certainly is that and Regan is that mm -hmm. at times. And uh, and if but if you're keeping the audience laughing, then they're also kind of empathizing and they're also connecting and they're not hating that that character for making these mistakes. And that's, I think, a very powerful thing that that without articulating it that clearly, we have sort of we have strived for in making Rutherford Falls. One of the details that I love this season, I mean, the show in general is so great and it's, you know, it's it's Sierra uh, spearheading, obviously, but all of the, the writers, there's uh, six Native writers on the staff and all of them as well, like, are reaching out to their communities to bring in art from their various communities and just sort of connections that they have. As an Indigenous actor, you know, frankly, you know, as, a, as an actor of color, I think Hollywood positions us to be sort of, in a way, guardians of, of cultural authenticity. With Rutherford Falls, I was placed in a position where I didn't have to do that. The writing was authentic. The writing came from our communities. So that allowed me to sort of just really be a better actor, to be very clear. All the success, you know, that I've had, um, you know, as an actor being recognized for my work on season one came because uh, Sierra and the rest of the creators uh, were, were shouldering the load um, carrying things uh, that would allow Jana and myself and the other the other Indigenous actors to really um, just level up. Uh, so I'm I'm so grateful for that. I feel like when it comes to Native um, stories on television that's made by non-Native people, there's usually an element of like hold for applause or it just feels like homework and you're just like, oh God. And I, we like, we always were like, let's avoid kind of feeling, you know, at, at every turn. And, and so in our lives um, as Native storytellers, I find that often very complex things will happen to us and they'll be coupled with comedy. And I always was like, if we could just tell our story as we experience it, I think people will not only get a real view into our experience, but they'll also be very entertained and will find it funny. Once Native people are in on the joke, it's, it's a really wonderful experience for, for any viewer coming into the show. So awesome to hear from those folks. We should mention Rutherford Falls is available on Peacock, which is part of our parent company, NBC Universal. Up next, a beloved icon, Julie Andrews. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. 
With Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. You know it's going to be a good day when you're in the presence of Julie Andrews. And earlier today, she stopped by Studio 1A to talk about her legendary career, including her latest role in Minions, The Rise of Gru. Check it out. The legendary Julie Andrews is known for her iconic roles in The Sound of Music, Mary Poppins, and The Princess Diaries. Well, now she's back in a role. That's not like her other ones. She's voicing Gru's mother in Minions, The Rise of Gru. And let's just say uh, she's not the most nurturing mother in the world. Take a not listen. <laughs> Mom, who is this sweaty guy? He's stinking up the house. I thought you were cooking cabbage. He's my new guru. <laughs> Tell your weird buddies they better stop pulling their weight around here or I'm kicking them out. They are killing my mellow vibe. Oh my gosh, this is so out of character and beautiful and lovely. Was it fun it's, playing the character? It's ter the she's the worst mother ever. <laughs> and it's sort of fun to do in a way. Yeah. How did you get into that character? That's the um, opposite of you. I think Steve Carell helped a great deal because I listened to his voice and what he sounded like. And he'd already decided before I came aboard. So I thought, well, I'd better be a a sort of version yes. of what he is, because we obviously come from the same place, <laughs> and I raised him, sort of. And uh, so I chose a, a sort of middle European odd voice. I, I, I kind of love that accent. <laughs> um, I, I have love no that. idea what I'm doing, but <laughs> there she is. I loved, loved, loved watching you get your American Film Institute uh, Lifetime Achievement oh, Award. Oh, thank you. It was a beautiful moment, and it was made even more beautiful because uh, there was a moment where all the Von Trapp kids oh, came out. I know. Can we please just show this clip? Because There's only five of them. There were, of course, yeah. seven children, but we, we are missing two, sadly. They passed. Well, it was so... Oh, look at them, look. And it was a sing-along. I could have picked Friedrich out of a lineup. Oh, yes. Yeah, right? Oh, yes. What yeah. was it like being reunited but with them? But you wouldn't recognize the little baby. That's yeah. the beautiful blonde la lady there. Tell me, what was it like see being with them again and hearing well, you the know, song? We do keep in touch, but not on a really regular basis. Yeah. I mean, Christmas is maybe birthdays and certainly get-togethers. But uh, we just bonded so hard that I think we're family anyway. Well, this song and this movie means so much to so many. When we hear it, we and, are taken right back. And what, to me. Yeah, tell me what it does mean to you and for you. Uh, well, it really was the, it was the most beautifully crafted movie. I mean, the details in the movie, the, first of all, the scenery, yeah. children, songs, music, all of it. Um, but it means very, very many memories, funny ones, yeah. real ones, lovely ones, and working with dear Chris Plummer also. Oh, amazing. Whom I adored, and we were friends for years. How old were you when you shot this movie? That's a good question. Yeah. I must have been 31, I think. 31 years old. Yeah. Wow. Just reflecting on this career and Mary Poppins and an Oscar and all <laughs> these awards, do you ever just sit with it all? I know you did it a moment like that, but do you Well, ever... I did and was wonderfully surprised by that tribute. But no, I don't think I do. Uh, I'm a busy mom and yeah. I'm very busy writing with my, with my 
daughter that yeah. w writes books with me, and yeah. we've done so many. We've got three more coming out in the next year. One, one's coming out in the fall, actually. Well, you don't stop with those books. Those are some of the favorites in our house, too. Thank well, you. Um, one of the things that surprised one of our cast members, Savannah Guthrie, was she's a Bridgerton freak. What she didn't know, pause, is that the voice of Lady Whistledown, and we're going to play it, <laughs> who she was. Let's take a listen. My name is Lady Whistledown. You do not know me, and rest assured, you never shall. But be forewarned, dear reader, I certainly know you. Okay, this is you. Uh, Miss Guthrie, are you... Blown. She said her My mind, mind is blown. She did not, she, and you she didn't know it was me? I had no idea, which oh is actually speaks to what a wonderful performance it is. Yeah. It's, it's not Thank Julie you. Andrews, it's Lady Whistledown. You know, I've never met the company in person. Of course, I see them on the show yeah. sometimes, but I do all my own recording far, far away from them. And do you like the, have you, you've seen the show. What do you think of that show? Oh, I think it's gorgeous yeah. looking. Yeah, and they're all wonderful in it, and they're lovely people to work with. I mean, uh, uh, Shonda Rhimes and the whole gang down are terrific. So there you are, it's, it's a joy. And I'm thrilled that they asked me. My one, you just played the one yeah. line that I always say, because I don't record everything at one yeah. time. So to get back into uh, character again, my first warm up is, my name is Lady Whistledown, you know? <laughs> oh, don't you love it? It's so good. Dying. Look at Harry's there too. But I mean, uh, that, that'll get me back into character if I do it. <laughs> well, you, you are such a delight. And I would encourage people to listen to the speech that you gave when you got your Lifetime Achievement Award because you spent your, your speech and your moment uh, congratulating so many other people who work behind the scenes. It was beautiful and just Thanks. just exactly I'm the so way you do it. I'm so glad you got it. it. I, wanted to I say, got it. We, where would we be without everybody around us uh, and helping and being wonderful and professional? Well, and, you're an amazing yeah. human being. We so appreciate you coming to our studio. We love when you're here. Come back with your book. I'd love okay, to. You know, and bring your daughter, of course. Thank you, got, you. Thank you. I'd love to. What a light that Julie Andrews. Minions, The Rise of Gru from Universal Pictures and Illumination Entertainment is in theaters on July 1st. Coming up, a 90s throwback you will not want to miss with another legend, Meryl Streep. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back. The lovely and uber-talented Meryl Streep celebrates turning 73 today. She has had so many terrific roles, but today we thought we'd highlight one in particular. Here she is speaking with Today back in 1995 about playing Francesca Johnson in The Bridges of Madison County. The much-anticipated movie version of Robert Waller's bestseller, The Bridges of Madison County, opens tomorrow, and it's already drawing rave reviews. It's the story of a middle-aged Iowa housewife who meets a globe-trotting photographer while he's on assignment taking pictures of Iowa's covered bridges. In the end, she must make a choice many women may wish they had. Actress Meryl Streep stars with so Clint Eastwood 
who also directed. Streep says she disliked the book but loved the screenplay. When she sat down with me recently, I asked her how the movie differs from the book. You know, I get the distinct feeling that I'm lost. Are you supposed to be in Iowa? Yeah. Well, then, you're not that lost. They took the, the treacle out of it, or whatever was too sweet, and they left what was still powerful and passionate. How did Clint Eastwood convince you to do it? I know that he has said, I made one call, and it was to you. Well, first he called my friend and said, how do I get her private number? And of course my friend gave it to him. <laughs> and um, so the phone rang in the kitchen, and I, he said, this is Clint Eastwood. And I said, you know, I thought it was my brother. I said, yeah, sure, <laughs> get off. And it was. And he said, I just uh, want you to read, read this. The next morning it arrived, and um, I called him right back and said, I'd love to do it. And I, I never had a doubt about, um, about it again, because, too, in the book, the woman was kind of a, a cipher. I couldn't get a picture of her. And in the screenplay, she, she was there. She was there on the first well, page to the last page, same person. So specific and, and lovely. And I, I said, you know, I want to do it. Would you like some iced tea? Other than specific and lovely, how would you describe this woman, Francesca Johnson? Francesca is someone whose loneliness is part, partly because she's been it's displaced from her childhood and the dreams of her childhood and, and placed in a life that where she's happy, she's content and um, but her, the palette of her life, the landscape of her life is maybe limited and she sees the limits of it and it's the periphery of her property and when she meets this man who's been all these wonderful places and is the opposite and when they discover that his yearning is for that warm kitchen, that centeredness that she has, and her yearning is, is for the other thing that he possesses, the adventure and the, the um, endless uh, sort of opportunity. I can run around the block howling in agony, study. She thought she could see it and she could see the horizon, and suddenly everything changed. And that was very appealing. About two and a half weeks in, which was halfway through the movie, because we worked very fast, uh, he said, you know, I, I don't say much, but that means it's good. So, so I said, so, <laughs> you like it? And he said, yeah. So, and, it was, um, it was really one of those experiences that's kind of effortless. Here's a fun fact. Meryl was nominated for the Oscar for her performance in that film. We hope you're having a great birthday, Mrs. Streep. And that is another Pop Star Plus in the books. Join us tomorrow for another great show. Until then, have a good one.
Hello and welcome to Wellness Today. I'm Chanel Jones and we are bringing you some important wellness news to kick off the start of summer. We'll share details about recent medical studies with tips on how you and your family can stay healthy. Then learn to strengthen every step with a few easy exercises that will transform your daily walk. Plus, we'll learn why it matters to have an LGBTQ friendly medical provider. And I tried a popular form of relaxation for the first time. It is everything you need to know to take care of your physical and mental wellness this month. Research publishes every day, but what does that mean for you and your family? Joining us to explain everything from extreme heat risk to camp safety is NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. She's here to break down the details of these medical studies and how they impact our day-to-day -day life. I'm so happy we're doing this. Quite often we hear about studies, but then we don't hear the details behind them. And That's these are true. really good ones. Yeah. So let's start with the first one. Um, it's associated with extreme heat um, and what it does for mortality rates. Right, I know. So. The, the extreme heat has been increasing now for a number of years. In okay. fact, many, many states in this country are experiencing days that are over 90 degrees, many of them, more than before. We have basically, you think, usually we have a summer season of heat, it's starting earlier, and it's lasting later. And this is really significant. So this was a research um, out of Penn okay. that actually looked at this kind of stuff. And the things that we want to talk to people about here are the signs of heat stroke and what you can do about them. So it's important, Chanel, right? I think most people have a misconception that uh, if you are having a heat stroke that your skin is going to be very wet because it's you're sweating a lot. Yes. Um, and that's actually not true. Your, really? your skin actually becomes very dry, very huh. red, uh, and very, very hot. You know, the number one symptom of a heat stroke is a core temperature of 104 degrees or more. But guess what? Most of us don't have a digital you know. thermometer. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right, so right. Um, obviously fainting, feeling dizzy, things like that and having that that dry skin are signs and symptoms of a heat stroke okay so what do you do for a heat stroke the number one thing and I really want viewers to understand this is to call 911 first okay. because if you suspect a heat stroke you need to get that person medical attention quickly I think people underestimate the severity of it I exactly think they can just you know cool down and it'll yeah. be okay but you you, you don't want to yeah. do that always err on the side of caution and then you move the person into a cool shaded area remove as much clothes as you can and then a little trick that I think is so so helpful let's say you're at a picnic and you have ice packs okay right? you put them under the neck put them in the groin and under the arms a lot of blood vessels there wait and under that the way, neck under the arm under the arms and, and, and in the, the groin, groin. Okay. and there's a lot of blood vessels in those areas and that can help people cool down you're not supposed to put people in an ice bath which That's people do they do the only people who can really do that are people who are like athletes, athletes. who just did a vigorous you know um, okay. a run or something like that and they can handle it but most people should not be put in an ice okay. bath those are the kind of things we'll, we'll always remember that now I know I will all right so moving on to yeah. another study that grabbed our attention summer camp safety a lot of parents obviously preparing to send their kids to summer camp I know I am we all want our kids to have fun but we also want to make sure they're safe yes what does the research say so this was a study out of the University of Michigan and they polled parents and you're gonna you're gonna be a little bit surprised by these statistics. Okay. Less than 50% of parents who were polled said that camp safety was a priority for them. Mm -hmm. And only one in 10, 10% said COVID precautions were important. You want to know wow. what the most important things were? What? Cost, location, mm -hmm. and activity. So it's kind of like, oh, where are your priorities, mm -hmm. guys? But I get it, right? We've yeah. all sent our kids to camp. There's a lot of things to take into consideration. One of the things that um, I think is really important uh, to understand is that camps will say whether or not they're accredited by the American Camp Association. Association. But you want to follow that up and confirm that they really are. And a really great resource is the American Academy of Pediatrics website. It's called healthychildren.org. Okay. They have numerous resources about camp and camp safety. Like, you know, think of your it's kids, not. right? Like, my daughter has migraines. Is the camp equipped to handle that? Are they mm. equipped to handle the mental health needs of your children? These are all things you want to know, right? You're it's entrusting. True. Especially if it's a sleepaway especially camp. Especially if it's yeah. a sleepaway camp. Yeah. So a lot of good, good information out there for, okay, for parents. Good. All right, the third study team sports and mental health yeah. uh, speaking of summer activities it looks at the connection between team sports and mental health in our kids yes. this is a hot topic a right hot now. topic on so many levels yeah. so this was a study again this was from Cal State they looked at kids between the ages of 9 and 13 and they found that the children who participated in a team sport had better mental health 
um, you know, parameters, let's say, in terms of anxiety, depression, and stuff like that, okay. as opposed to kids who either were not in sports or who were participating in, you know, an independent kind of sport. Okay. Um, but I think immediately we might say, okay, that's important, team sports are important, but what about all these news Things that we're That's hearing. what I was thinking. I'll be honest. Exactly. I mean, it seems like we're hearing about the pressure, especially for right. college athletes. Or, right. You know. So when does good cross over and become not so healthy? So you know, it's kind of like a little bit of that Goldilocks, right? Mm. Not enough isn't good, but maybe too much isn't good either. Um, and experts say that for sure, the college athlete has a tremendous amount of pressure and stress. Right? They're managing school and travel, um, and they have to keep up their scholastic yeah. and their athletic performance. So they have some unique challenges. But I think this is a lesson for all of us, and Chanel, I know you yeah. have kids who are teens as well, a lot of pressure for these kids to perform yeah. athletically. We need to be paying attention to their mental health too, and not mm. just to assume they're, that they're okay that they're with all okay. the stress that we're putting on them. That is so important. Yeah. Okay, another important story, uh, the study that grabbed our attention, speaking of kids, the, it talks about the dangers of inappropriate antibiotic use yes. with kids. We've heard that sometimes we overuse them. We call the doctor and we say, can you get me an antibiotic yes. for my kids? Right, 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 right. So there's a, a few different things that, that are concerning about overuse of antibiotics. One, of course, is antibiotic resistance, mm -hmm. right? We know that's a big thing. Um, expenditures, you're going to the doctor, you're missing school, you're, you're, you're missing work, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of dollars that go into this that, that are unnecessary. And also, people have side effects yeah. from, from taking antibiotics. There are actually numerous ones. And probably one of the biggest things that I find that is a problem is that kids are getting antibiotics, maybe for, maybe for a virus, and they never okay. needed it in the first place. And guess what? They get a rash. And then they live their entire life saying, I have a, a rash to penicillin that sticks with them through their adult lives. That's a big, big problem. The take home, I think, for parents here is that you need to advocate for your children um, and not, you know, not to discount the importance and the role of the pediatrician in, in making a diagnosis and treating appropriately. But you as the parent need to say, just want to make sure my kid really needs this antibiotic, right? Mm. Um, so it's a two-way street. It's not always the parents saying we want it. Sometimes no. the doctors just prescribe it. Exactly. Okay. And you have to advocate for the kids, right? Because okay. they're young and they, and they can't do it themselves. Another good one, a survey that finds that most men think they are healthier than others. Yeah. And let's talk about those annual health screenings. Father's Day is coming up. Right. It's so important. Right. So this is a Harris poll. I love these stats. So 33% of men polled said that they don't need to go to the doctor every year. 33%. We'll 33%. 65% said that they were they thought they were healthier than like the average guy next to them. 38% um, get their health information on social media, and 38% put their pets' needs, pets' health before theirs. Wow. Aren't those interesting numbers? We have some work to do, I but know. yet I believe it. I know. Oh, sure. But here's the thing. So do you actually have to see the doctor every year? Believe it or not, the literature is a little bit mixed on that mm. as to whether or not seeing your doctor every single year is necessary. I would say in middle age, it becomes much more necessary. Sure. You do want to establish that relationship. It's always easier to take care of someone when they're sick, when you know when, the, when, when you know them when they are healthy. You're so good. You're so lovely. Dr. Azar, <laughs> now she has to actually go help her I'm patients. I'm going to go see my patients yes, now. Yes, so thank you. Good information. <laughs> for sure. Know. Thank you. All right, coming up, the exercises to help you take everything every moment in stride. And later, I'm hooked, I loved it, I tried a sound bath for the very first time. We're gonna tell you all about it, all that and more just ahead on Wellness Today. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back after 49 years of Title IX, and we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're back with Wellness Today, wellness news you can use. It is walking month here at the Today Show. Research suggests that there are endless physical and mental health benefits to taking a walk, from lowering your resting heart rate to feeling more energized. Our dear friend Al Roker even walked his way to the finish line of the Brooklyn Half Marathon. Now, fitness expert Stephanie Mansour is going to help you put your best foot forward with a few strength exercises. Thanks, Janelle. I'm Stephanie Mansour, and I'm so excited that you've joined us during our month-long walking challenge. I want to show you a few exercises that'll help you build strength and avoid injuries as you take more and more steps each day. First, we're going to start with a squat. Start with your feet as wide as your hips. We're gonna pull the abs in and sit back as if you're about to sit back into a chair. Now I'm gonna show you this from the side, but I want you to make sure that when you're looking down at your toes, your knees do not go past your toes. That's a common mistake. So we wanna keep the knees back, lead with the glutes, sink the tailbone down, pull the abs in to support the low back, press down through the heels to stand up. Next, we're gonna move on to our marching bridge. So we're gonna lie down on our backs and come into a bridge position. Now this works the hamstrings and the glutes, which are important for helping you walk more efficiently and effectively. So in this position with the feet close to the hands, we're gonna slowly lift the hips up, the lower back comes off the ground and the middle back. You wanna make sure to pull your belly button in towards your spine like someone's touching you with a sharp object and you're trying to pull that navel in because this is going to help us with stability in the core and also make sure that we're not dumping and putting pressure on the low back. You only have to lift up about an inch or two or if you're more advanced, you can lift up higher. Pull your abs in and keep your hip bones steady rather than shaking from side to side as you do this move. We need to really keep it stable and in control. Next, we're gonna move into a plank and then a downward facing dog. So coming into a plank position, we're gonna start on our hands and knees and line the shoulders up over the wrists. From here, we're gonna tuck the toes under and lift the hips up into a plank position. Pull the abs in and reach the heels towards the back of the room. Make sure that your back is in a straight line. For a modification, you can lower down onto your knees. Then from the plank position, we're gonna pull the abs in and lift up and back into a downward facing dog. Press down through the hands and externally rotate the shoulders as you reach the hips up and reach the heels towards the ground. Now for a modification here, you can open the hands a little wider, fan the fingers out and open the feet wider and bend the knees. If you wanna do the full modification, you'll go from the half plank right here and then you'll tuck the toes under, lift the hips up and press back with the hands open wide, the knees bent and the tailbone reaching up towards the ceiling. Not only are we building that core strength, but we're also building that flexibility in the backs of the legs. Now next we're gonna do a seated oblique twist and that's gonna help us with the internal and external obliques, which are great when we're walking and pumping those arms. So sitting up nice and tall, hands behind your knees, Take a deep breath in and then exhale, pull the abs in and roll down just slightly. Have the hands at the center of your chest and then twist to one side, back through center, twist to the other, back through center. For an added bonus, you can squeeze those inner thighs together to really work your entire core. Next, we're gonna stand up and move into one of my favorite exercises, which is a knee raise into a backwards leg lift. So we're working on hip flexor mobility here. So if you're looking to take longer strides or if you're looking to walk faster, building that strength and the mobility is key to helping your walk feel better. So hands on the hips, we're gonna lift one knee up at about a 90 degree angle and then slowly shift your weight forward and extend that leg back into a backwards leg lift. Slowly balance, if you need to, you can touch your toe on the ground. Come up with that knee, 90 degree angle. Pull the abs in, slowly lean forward, reach the leg back, engage the glute and the hamstring. One more on this side, abs in tight to help guide you. Good, and exhale and come to center. And then finally, to round this strength training workout out, we're going to go into calf raises. So standing with your feet as wide as your hips again, hands on your hips, we're gonna lift up onto the tiptoes and lower down. 
up onto the tiptoes and lower down. We're strengthening the backs of the legs. So in doing this multifunctional workout routine, we're helping you build lower body and core strength so that you can walk and feel like you're moving more freely. And also, this is gonna enhance your walk and enhance the strength in your entire body. Thanks, Stephanie. It's never too late to get moving. Join the Start Today community on Facebook and follow along throughout the rest of the month to find inspiration and motivation to get walking. All right, coming up, celebrating Pride Month at the doctor's office and later the instruments and melodies that help me find a new level of relaxation right after this. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Women's basketball has been systematically held back after 49 years of Title IX, and we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Jackson now weekdays at 5 on NBC News now for breaking news in our changing world download the NBC News app June is Pride Month, and all month long we're honoring the LGBTQ community. It can be challenging for anyone to find a physician that understands your unique needs, but especially for LGBTQ people. So for that reason, we've invited two experts to talk about best practices for finding a friendly provider for both physical and mental needs. We have Dr. Barbara Warren, uh, the director, the senior director of LGBTQ programs and policies at Mount Sinai Health Systems Office for Diversity and Inclusion, and and Dr. Ming Hao Lu is the director of the Freedman Transgender Program at Lenox Hill Hospital, Northwell Health. Good morning to both of you. Or thank morning. you guys. I'm so used to saying good morning on the mm -hmm. Today Show. This could be any time of the day. <laughs> I think it's so important to set this up about maybe for both of you, the biggest challenges facing the LGBTQ community, because I think sometimes if you're not walking in someone's mm -hmm. shoes, you don't even recognize that it is a challenge mm -hmm. in the first place. So can you put this in perspective for other people as to why this is so important mm -hmm. to discuss? Absolutely. So I think one of the biggest challenges is even getting access to a knowledgeable and sensitive pr provider. Um, we often say that prevention is the best medicine, and if people are not getting access to care, then people in the community are not getting screened for conditions that can be more prevalent, um, such as heart disease, SCDs, including HIV, and certain types of cancers. Um, in addition, I think another major challenge facing the community is mental health and also intimate par partner violence. I didn't even think about that part of it too. Mm -hmm. So again, you have the physical part of it and you also mm -hmm. have the, the mental health aspect. What would you say about why this think, is so important? I think to follow up on uh, the idea of prevention and uh, getting uh, routine health care, particularly good primary care, so that it doesn't end up being a, an acute or a crisis in your health. I think one of the things that we really emphasize at Mount Sinai in training our, our providers 
and also is a huge issue in the LGBT community is the concept and the impact of minority stress. Mm. And minority stress is any kind of stress related to being a marginalized or ta targeted minority at, as many LGBTQ people still are. Mm -hmm. And it's really important for LGBTQ patients and people to understand that even if they have access to great affirmative care um, and in pretty good health, the accumulated stress or the secondary stress of worrying about uh, or anticipating discrimination, mm. prejudice, violence, some of the anti-LGBTQ sentiments and laws that are being passed now increases your risk factor for many, many diseases because what happens is when you get stressed, your heart rate increases, you um, have cortisol that's sustained over time and as, as we know as healthcare providers that can lead to all kinds of chronic health conditions. So it's really important to be aware of that and it's important for your providers to be aware of that, mm -hmm. particularly when they're doing preventative and wellness care for it. It makes a lot of sense. If you can't walk into a physician's office and talk to that physician and be your full self right. and be honest about your life, your lifestyle, all those things, that physician can't treat you, you know, effectively. Right. So with that said, Dr. Lou, let's break it down. How should someone go about finding um, an LGBTQ friendly provider? That's a great question. So one can do a basic search on Google, um, find providers and research more about their, the providers and the services they offer. Sites like ZocDoc also offer um, for people to search on their directory specifically okay. for LGBTQ plus friendly providers. Hmm. In addition, um, GLMA, which used to be known as the Gay Lesbian Medical Association, also has a free nationwide provider search tool um, for LGBTQ plus friendly providers. Um, but really what my patients have found to be perhaps even more helpful is that um, they go through social media channels such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and sometimes Reddit, mm -hmm. and they get referrals from other people in the community who've actually seen these doctors or other healthcare providers and been very pleased with the experience. So then let's take the next step then. Once you find a provider, how can you ensure that that person is a good fit for you? Well, one of the things I think it's important is to check out the website of the organization or the healthcare system that provider works for. Okay. If they don't uh, have an LGBT specific page or referral service or information or they don't advertise themselves, for example, as a, an LGBT health equality leader, many, many healthcare systems now ascribe to the LGBT Healthcare Equality Index, which is a national benchmarking survey conducted by uh, the Human Rights Campaign Foundation, which really helps hospitals and healthcare providers put all the things into place that make LGBT healthcare uh, affirmative and effective in their um, hospitals. Also, if so, to look it up, find out are they an LGBTQ healthcare equality leader? Do they have an LGBTQ healthcare website? Um, also, when you get to the office, to look around before you even meet whoever the provider is going to be. Are you asked for your sexual orientation and gender identity, your partner status, mm -hmm. uh, on your intake forms? Is there LGBT uh, visual things in the, in the office? Do they have pride flags? Do they have the advocate, the national LGBTQ magazine is part of their magazines on display? Do they have pamphlets? All of these are signals that this is an environment that knows that LGBT people come to them. They want it to be visible. They want it to be welcoming. Um, and so those are all clues too. Um, but I agree with Dr. Liu, uh, referrals uh, from knowledgeable providers and also uh, friends in the community can be really, really powerful and important. That's so helpful. And you know, we talk about it a lot in the bigger cities, but in some of the rural areas too. I mean, you know, this is obviously people watching all over the country. Mm -hmm. It's important to try to have those resources. Thank you guys mm -hmm. both so much um, for coming in, Dr. Warren and Dr. Liu. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. All right, when we come back, the transformative relaxation experience that helped me find my inner peace. like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. 
we're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Wellness Today. I am so excited to debut a new segment in the show where I'm going to try some of the trends, classes, and activities that I'm most curious about within the wellness space. As the school year comes to a close and I'm shuffling my kids to their end of year activities, I wanted to see if I could find some inner zen with a sound bath. And it had a profound impact. Take a look. The melodies of the singing bowls and the vibrations of the gong echo through the halls of the Ohm Center on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, where I tried a sound bath for the first time. So let's start with the basics. What is a sound bath? A sound bath is where you are experiencing the being bathed by all the sounds that are created from different kinds of instruments. The goal is to help you enter into a deep state of relaxation. Sound baths are a gateway into deeper meditation. Suzanne Hill, founder of the Ohm Center and my guide for the sound bath, began meditating on her own at 17 after years of working as an acupuncturist and encouraging her patients to try meditation, she began teaching herself and opened this space in 2019. What difference are you seeing in, in the people who you help? They are so much more relaxed. They seem much, much lighter, like the burdens of the world are lifted. Even if nothing has shifted in the external world internally, mm -hmm. they've cleansed and so they feel better. Since this story is about trying a sound bath, what should the takeaway be? for people who are interested. Not to be intimidated by it. It doesn't have to be a spiritual or religious experience. You're just having a relaxation experience. And before long, it was my time to try and rest. I am not quite sure what to expect. I'm gonna try, I don't wanna fall asleep, which I can do pretty easily these days, but also I'm looking forward to feeling something that I haven't felt before. You know, I've meditated before with calm, but I've never done a sound bath, so I, my heart is open to receive. I'm gonna have you lie down. Once I entered the room, Here, Suzanne handed me an eye mask and encouraged me to okay. let go of the worries down. of the day. And just allow yourself to sink into the ground. Be aware of the ground supporting your body so there's no part of you that has to hold yourself up. Then she began playing, creating a symphony of sounds. <laughs> Crystal bowls have a cooler sound and the uh, alloy bowls have a warmer sound and we like to mix them together. We also have a 40 inch symphonic gong, which is very grounding. When you play the gong, it's really about releasing any negativity. Singing bowls are more nurturing and nourishing. She transferred the bowls to my hands to feel the vibrations as she played. the sound bath finished, I felt better, and that sense of calm reverberated through the rest of my day. That was really great. Yeah. That was great. It's like I was at a spa. Music and sound is very healing, and I think that's why people are gravitating to sound baths now. They don't want to intellectually figure out how to feel better. They just want to experience feeling better.
I don't think it was in my head. It's hard to explain, but I really did feel more calm and relaxed, even in the hours and even the couple of days after. After the sound bath, I let what usually bothers me running around and the hustle and bustle, I let it go. And I'm telling you, I'm really looking forward to going back and doing it again. So if there's one in your area, maybe you should try it. Find some ways, frankly, anyway, uh, to relax. And I'm glad I got to learn about this one. Thank you for joining me to learn all of the wellness news you can use. I hope you found it inspiring and motivating to learn about how to take care of ourselves and each other as we ease into the official start of summer. I'm Chanel Jones, and we'll see you next time on Wellness Today. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Like, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh my God, I had one job. None of which I mastered because I didn't know the first thing about how to cook. But those days are behind me for good, and I'm finding some confidence in the kitchen. Now, my friend and all-around superstar, Drew Barrymore, and her chef, BFF, Pilar Valdez, are gonna teach me a few weeknight favorites. We're gonna be making a watermelon salad with pistachio duca and shrimp scampi with bucatini, both from their cookbook, Rebel Homemaker. I am so excited to be cooking with these ladies today, so let's get started. Drew and Pilar, I need to know everything you know. Well, I know that I love you. I know that I love you. She really does, and we're so excited to be here. What's the plan, Pilar? So today's plan, we're gonna cut the watermelon, pickle the rind, prepare the duca, assemble the salad, cook the shrimp and pasta, make the pan sauce, plate, and serve. So first up yeah. for our watermelon salad, we're gonna break down the watermelons. I do love a good piercing, but now of course I'm stuck. Oh, this good. Wow, this Boom. Was... Savannah, you're doing great over there. Oh. It's not Don't a competition. That. Look at the difference between our two heads. <laughs> Look at your melons. Oh my gosh. And put the other half. That's what I was aside. thinking. Why are we so juvenile? <laughs> When are we going to turn 14? I know. Okay. I see how this episode yes. is going to oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to lob off the top of it. We're going to just tape off the dark green. Mine doesn't look anything like yours so does, So what Pilar. happened with yours, Drew, is that you didn't, um, you took off, you were overachieving. You took off the skin and the rind. Um, but our first step was just to do uh, the skin. So Savannah, you can continue on what you were doing and okay. now we're just taking off the rind. So exactly okay. the same kind of oh, okay. sawing and shaving motion downwards. Okay. Now are we keeping it off. this rind? We are, because that's what we're going to pickle, oh. actually. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take your watermelon and you could cube this, but for this salad, mm -hmm. I actually like to cut it in irregular shapes. I feel good about this part. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, it does. So you're going to take your... Ryan, Ryan, basically, yes. and we're going to uh, dice it. Okay. You're gonna flip it over so it has, yeah. Mm -hmm. Savannah, I can see the claw coming out, which is really good. I'm trying to learn. You want to tuck in those. I like digits. to cut like this. <laughs> I do too. I'm like, I like to lop off. <laughs> and this would Thickness. be a dicing, this not is a, a dice. mince. Nope. Because What's it's pretty chunky. What's the difference between dicing and mincing? Size. So the, absolutely. Size. <laughs> size matters. <laughs> I'm gonna take a sip on that. What are we drinking? This is so good, by the it way. Is so what good. is it? It's a mocktail. It's a version of a Pim's. It's based on a Pim's cup, which is usually with gin, but this one is oh, without. By the way, you would never know there was an alcohol in here. Oh my gosh. Drew what is loves, that? Very gingery, right? Yeah, so there's ginger beer, and Drew, I know you love tea, so it's a combination of black and rooibos. Okay, that's a very unique flavor. Yep. <laughs> okay. So good. All right, so wait, what do right. we do now? Pickling anything is a flavor profile that I really love. Oh, me too. It is basically uh, equal parts water and apple cider okay. vinegar. So, so Anna, three so quarters cup that. water. Mm -hmm. Three fourths cup water, three fourths cup apple cider vinegar. Got it. Mm -hmm. And then one you can actually, um, and then one, mm -hmm. exactly. Ooh, I like the honey equal bear. parts um, a lot. Yeah. It's just such an easy brain yeah. yes. ratio to remember. Yeah. yeah. Let's add in uh, the salt. What, are you sprinkling it on purpose? Uh -huh. or are you just trying? <laughs> no, I am because I don't like the dump. Is yeah. like, then you have to work harder to get the solubility if you shake it in. 
I feel like it's just a better That's method. actually a very good pro tip. And right. then Drew, I'm gonna have you add in the fennel seed, which is half on top. Half teaspoon. Half teaspoon of fennel please, seed. Honey. Lovely. Sprinkle on in. All right, you got crazy. It's <laughs> half usually. teaspoon uh, coriander. There you go. I'm and we're gonna do half a teaspoon of the cumin. Oh. And then the last thing is half a teaspoon of the pink peppercorn. I love pink peppercorn, and I especially love it on green dishes. Yeah. Oh, Savannah, perfect. have you had pink peppercorn? No, I have before? not. So they're really, and you can actually take a little and take a little bite, and they're like very fruity and floral. Oh, yeah, but they're peppery. not super, a little peppery, but not as pungent as a yeah. box. It's gonna basically come up to a little bit of a simmer. Okay. And as long as the honey and the salt is completely dissolved, then you can pull it off. Drew, you're gonna carefully pour it into our one cup okay, of water at well. time. She's like, you know that graceful <laughs> ginger side of yourself yes. that you don't have to try to tap into it? just pouring it right over. Yep. Then what happens? After 30 minutes, this is going to be good to go. It's like so freshness. easy. Super easy. That's pickling. That's pickling. pickling. Boom. Boom. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now we're moving on to the pistachio dukkha component of our salad. Okay. Dukkha is an Egyptian condiment. It's usually a blend of like nuts and seeds and spices. You okay. should have some coriander, coriander? seed. Mm -hmm. Two, teaspoons Two teaspoons of coriander seed. Okay. Is Drew. this is this the cumin? That's cumin. Okay, mm -hmm. Ooh, absolutely. Going off, oh. going rogue. Okay, then it's she's one, rogue. So one quarter so cup sesame seeds. Hold, hold on, the sesame oh. seeds. Actually, Savannah, so you're gonna toast that. Can okay, we first. turn it up? How high should it be? Um, let's do medium. Okay. Okay, and it's an empty plate. There's no oil or anything. No, absolutely okay. not. You want it in a dry skillet. They have skillet. oils on them, right? Yes, they do. So they're starting to release it, and you just have to shake it occasionally, not okay. constantly. Okay. Um and. You're gonna notice a change in color. They're gonna start to get a little darker, mm -hmm. but really, what you're looking for, Savannah, is the smell. Okay. It's gonna start to like release this like toasty smell. You're gonna smell the coriander. It's gonna mm -hmm. be very floral. It's starting. Can you smell yeah. it? Yeah. Let's give that a shake, actually. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, I can. Ooh, I like it. And yes. on the average, would you say about two minutes? Color? About two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Take it off. because okay. I can see a okay. little bit of heat. Let's okay. turn oh, yeah. off the oh, pan. Yeah. Okay. Now what? Um, and you're gonna divide actually the spices between your and Drew's mortar and pestle. Okay. Habsy, habsy. What I like to do when I have spices is that instead of go in and like bash immediately, I kind of like to muddle, so a circular motion, and that helps it break down because okay. if you go in and you're bashing, it's yeah. gonna like firework spices okay, so I'm everywhere. like just kind of stirring. So, yep. Can I start smashing yes, now? Yes, I think so. And you can apply a little more pressure to Savannah. Am I trying to get this to like a very fine grain? Pretty, pretty fine. So with the dukkha, we want a little bit of a mm. play on texture. So you'll have fully ground pieces and then some pieces that are just more broken up. So I'm happy mm -hmm. with where mine is at. How so do you like mine? Right. What do you think? Beautiful. Oh, Lovely. Okay. That's good. good. Yeah. That's and nice. I think you, you guys can both pop uh, your spices, Savannah and Drew, into that bowl. Okay. Into one bowl. Into one okay. bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yours is nicer. I and think. that's really nice because then you guys have a, a uh, texture. Yeah. Yes. Play on I texture. I went hard and went soft. Uh, well. So now we're going to toast the sesame seed. Okay, we need one quarter cup sesame seed. So mm -hmm. just let it go in there. Unlike, yeah, you can shake it a little. You can use the spatula. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. Sesame seeds, as soon as they start to change color, you want to take them off the heat. So keep stirring that, Savannah. They're going to go golden really, really quickly. I can okay. smell them, so I think we're almost there. Okay. And you definitely don't want to burn them. No. Burning bad. Yeah. Okay. Burning bad. <laughs> While Savannah is uh, toasting the sesame seeds, Drew, I'm going to have you add in um, our salt. Our That's flaky a, sea salt. Is this a maldon? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's a One. tablespoon into that bowl where your spices are. I love a maldon. I do too. It's so different I than other salts. I put it on salts. top of my chocolate chip cookies. Yes. yes. Nice. Look at you. <laughs> I did not. I have a little baking skill. And then Drew, you're going to do, um, those are hemp hearts or hemp seeds. Two tablespoons. And hemp seeds. And Savannah. Yes, they're really great forms of protein and fiber and vitamins, actually. And again, it's like we're playing a lot with textures. Yeah. So that's a really lovely addition. Your favorite, Drew, half a teaspoon. I would say, Savannah, maybe 30 more seconds on that, and then we're going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, of pink peppercorn okay. and just a smidge, a smidge, smidge, smidge of black pepper. Okay. Smidge. That's more that, that's than a plenty. Smidge. That's definitely more than a smidge. Wow, you have a hot. <laughs> I love <laughs> spicy tongue. Everything could be coated and rubbed in pepper. As All right, far do you as think we're good on these seeds? Let me see. I feel like they're mm. almost there, okay. right? They're almost turning golden. But <laughs> <laughs> like, we need music. <laughs> All right, okay. I think that looks really good, Savannah. Okay. So let's uh, turn off the heat. Dump them in. Dump them in. And now we have the pistachios. I can just kind of like Absolutely. do this like Savannah, Julia Child like stuff. That's great. You're kind of rocking back and forth. Am I making you proud, Pilar? You are making me so proud. This second. <laughs> I'm actually going to stop you guys right there because I really like the two textures that we're playing with. Okay. Savannah's on like a finer and then Drew's is on a rough. So we are established This a is a really good combo. <laughs> we're going to scoop all those nuts into this bowl. Scooping the nuts. Yeah. Pretty colors, too. Really, really pretty, yeah. And Drew, you're going to give it a good mix. No pistachio left behind. There. No pistachio mm -hmm. left behind, please. OK. That looks amazing. Yeah. And I'm busting out something here that I was told. It's a gold box Savannah's tasting spoons. Do you have special spoons? They're just special because you're supposed to taste your food. Did you know that? I didn't, and now I do. So just take a little. Take a little, and and then we can sort of play from there. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be, it's gonna have that floral from. Yes. I like it. I wouldn't yes. change one thing, would you? It's it has perfect. enough salt, enough pepper. It, it really, really does. does. <laughs> All right, success, ladies. The love story continues. <laughs> we made duka. We're gonna assemble the salad, but when we're plating it, it's gonna be a little bit of a friendly competition. Ooh. And then. <laughs> Let's go. You guys got this. <laughs> All right, okay. so in your little jar um, is a simple lemon vinaigrette. Okay. It's just lemon, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Okay. And it's separated a little, so just give them a little shake. Mm -hmm. It emulsifies it, which is there you ever go, so Drew. important. If anyone's doing an oil and vinegar salad, emulsify it first, it'll taste 50 times better. Okay. Dropping your knowledge. All right, so in your bowl, you have a little bit of arugula. So I like to coat a little bit of the bowl. I know, it sounds crazy, right, Savannah? But You're I'm not going to use all of that. No, no, you don't have to, and you dress the taste. But when you coat the side of the bowl, you're basically not dumping it on the leaves. And then now we can start building. Okay. So a little arugula on the plate. Remember, oh. you're making something beautiful. Okay. okay. Arugula on the plate. This is where the competition comes. Yes. OK, so and what's then our next one? Your watermelon slices, you're going to dip it in the duka. Oh, dip it in the duka. And however you want to <laughs> dip it is up to you. And you're going to lay it yeah, on you, the plate. You duka you. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So you're just dipping those watermelon slices. And oh, I like to leave a bit of it without the duka, just so that it has that freshness. And then you'll get the pop. Oh, so some crunch. duka and some don't. <laughs> But I mean, I'm actually asking. I feel like they should be like late night comedy. I know. I know. <laughs> Just cheesy like Rodney Dangerfield. By the way, the best. Okay. Here, there's no rules. Okay. Don't forget to finish also with your pickled watermelon rind. You can scatter it around. How can I win? What if I make like a tower? I know. You can by totally the way, make I'm a like tower. Thinking of tower. A little like time. Jenga. Okay. And then you can finish with a little bit of Maldon salt also, okay. which just like brings all those flavors together. I learned from A little that. salt bay Maldon salt. Oh, I love it. I don't know. Shall we? 
Oh, Vogue, <laughs> Vogue for the camera. Yes, that's, I think we know who's his best. It's yours. <laughs> this looks very pretty. Really? It, it really does. I like I your little tower. I feel like they're both they're both pretty. They, I also feel like these are three extremely different, different approaches. <laughs> yeah. You went like just put it on the plate. No, actually, I feel like yours has like a um, a, a, a Lanes, strategic right? pattern. Yeah. No, it does. And yours is sort of abundant, <laughs> and mine is a mouth. I love it. All, All right. right. Shall Cheers. we? Shall we walk? Yeah. Let, oh, Cheers, let's guys. Go. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical turn point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical turn point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're doing one of Drew's favorite recipes. Scampi. 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 Who's going to devein and have their way with those shrimp? Well, they actually are already peeled and deveined, although Drew is killer deveining them. <laughs> All right, but we've got the water boiling. We've got the water boiling. Did, did we salt it like the sea? I love that. Say it again, Savannah. I'm, salt it like the sea. Thank you. Okay. So, Drew, what I'm going to have you do actually is season the shrimp. So, that's actually baking soda. Mm -hmm. And so, we're going to do just a quarter teaspoon, Drew, and you're going to sprinkle it all over the shrimp. And the reason why we do baking soda, mm -hmm. I love it, is that it basically helps no the shrimp brown and get this really beautiful color. Oh, okay. And then we're gonna do salt and pepper mm -hmm. on your shrimp. I feel like you should be doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seasoned it with salt and then we'll uh, give good. it a good toss. I love okay. a little flour, a Look little it, I egg learned. wash. I'm shimmying my salt. No not dumping, dumping over here. That, No, not anymore, I'll never dump a again. Little. So we're gonna let the shrimp that has salt and pepper and baking soda sit for about like five or 10 minutes. And meanwhile, we are going to attack our garlic. Okay. Um, so today we're gonna slice the garlic fine. We don't wanna crush it because that's just gonna burn in our sauce. Mm. So what I like to do is just take the tip off. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of brownness. You're gonna spin it. We're gonna cut it lengthwise. Not okay. Fast. You have some olive oil. We're gonna do three tablespoons. Happy to eyeball it. There's also a measure if you'd like, but. Well, they, like, I've been encouraged to eyeball. I so I'm gonna try. Eyeball. I think this is. One tablespoon. I think that's good. Two. Yeah. Three. Beautiful. Do you agree? Yeah. Kind of, sort of? That's really, really great. And then you're just going to rock Our it. Our baby's all grossed up. <laughs> <laughs> She's eyeballing. Oh, no. yeah, I eyeballed. OK. OK. And what you're going to do, Savannah, is add the garlic. Mm -hmm. Put it right in there? Yeah. You don't want too high of a heat yeah. and to end up like me who burns their garlic. And okay. Drew, you're gonna add the red pepper flakes. Okay. <clears throat> and having enough oil helps you not burn the garlic. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many? Half a teaspoon, so just that measure. And if you want things spicier, you can go more. You no, know, she again, does. 
Miss Spicy she, over she here. Likes, it's gonna start to change color. It's gonna go kind of translucent, translucent. and sticky. I, I have feel it like in... you can start pulling. Okay, um, you do this. So we were just ooh, um, infusing the olive oil mm, basically with good. that garlic and pepper okay. uh, flavor. Okay. Okay. So what? Throw this in. You're gonna throw it in, and then you're gonna give it a good stir. And we're using bucatini, um, which is basically like a, a thicker spaghetti with a hole in it. Okay. Um, but you could use any sort of long shape of pasta, and you're gonna cook that pasta until just al dente okay. because we're gonna finish it off in the sauce. Okay. Um, do but sauce. you're gonna lay the shrimp down in a single layer okay and you're not gonna stir it you're gonna shake it you know lay occasionally it lay it down yeah actually will you hold savannah you don't think it's hot enough yeah so stand back how are you what are you looking at to know if it's so hot you enough you want a, a little bit of ripple you do not want smoke we're not okay. like, trying no. to and no bubble <laughs> Wait, let me you just... want that sizzle and you're not getting oh yeah it. i'm definitely wanting i can see it a little bit here let me can i borrow that there you go. Here you go. There oh. you go. There you go. Oh. So let's start. Yeah, here interesting. You go. I stepped away. Everything started <laughs> functioning. Meanwhile, my arm is going to fall off. Um, holding these. Oh, uh, yeah. Shrink. That, you know what? I hear what you're talking about yeah. now, Pilar. Yeah. There's a deck. That's sizzle. why she wanted to hear this. No wonder. Yeah. All right. People always talk about, talk about cooking, you know, like smell and what you can see. I'm mm. always like, I'm like, I can hear my water boiling. I can hear it sizzling. Oh, like, I like that. She brought in like the strongest that. sense of them all. <laughs> exactly. The color will start to tell you when pink. it's cooked. It starts to get pink. It's and tails are already pink. Yep. Do it's, I need to flip them over ever? Not You know yet. what, let's, I think it's a little too early, but you, let's peek at one and basically the color will have changed and it's gonna have a little bit of like kind of, sp ooh, okay. That looks so good to me. A little more. Okay. And you can give the pan a little bit of a light shake but we're not. You like, don't mess with them. We're not trying. Yeah. them. So Savannah, when you flip them, you're gonna kind of move them to a different. Okay. Uh, They're gonna go in different, different spot. There moving you a different go. neighborhood. Yeah. Because it does. You know, some stuff will have heat dip spot I know. I'm gonna have you add two tablespoons of that butter. So that's one, one two, two. Beautiful. Just into that pan. Uh, Ooh, now lovely. we're talking. The reason why we put just the two pats of butter right now is that you're basically starting to build that flavor. All right. You touch it with your finger right now. You see Pretty how firm. firm it is? Yes. Is okay. that a good thing? That is a really good thing. Okay. So we're almost there. So we're just going to rescue the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Take them out? Take them out. Leave the butter in and cook in. Okay. And oh, they're, I... they're basically like That's almost it. done. Mm -hmm. We're going to finish them off with the pasta and the sauce. Drew, will you actually, speaking of pasta, stir. I've forgotten. Um, please stir it. Test and it. then maybe just uh, try and no, very far. Nowhere All right. near. All right. Hard as a rock. <laughs> Al dente. Stiff right. as a board. This is like, can I, pencils? Sure. Uh, that's great. So no, that's, oh yeah. So in this little carafe here, mm -hmm. we have a uh, white w wine. Wine, okay. Dump it in. Dump it in, and then you're gonna take your wooden Ooh. spoon. Deglaze? Deglaze. What is deglazing, Savannah? Scraping the nasty bits off the bottom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, the, I know, the flavor bits. Yes, absolutely. I did learn a deglazing. Um, I love that. All right, you're gonna do, um, not the all that butter, actually. You're gonna do four more tablespoons, basically. One, yeah. two. Oh, look yeah. at you eyeballing Three. it. Yes. That's impressive. Four. All right, and that goes into the pan. Look at yeah. This is hey, right here. Duty. This is graduate school. <laughs> We're gonna dump in the cooked garlic, all that oil, and mm. the chili. We're gonna let this go. I want you guys to taste it. Where it is, there's Savannah's golden oh, the box. Golden spoon. But you so have there's one. no lemon yet. It tastes lemony to me now. Really? Oh, from the white wine. Right. Oh. And that's going to reduce in color. Oh, down. my. What God, do you think? Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> I'm actually just going to come in. Mm -hmm. What's this lemon juice? So it's two tablespoons of lemon. We're not going to do all of it because I want to do kind of to taste. Mm -hmm. So let's start there, okay. I think. What do you think over there? Uh, that, that, no, no, not done. Still not done. Well, actually, I'd like Pilar to test this. Because happy to noodles keep cooking. Yeah, and, and we're gonna finish it off in the sauce as well. So this maybe might it's actually be almost good. there. Mm -mm. Still one more minute. Yeah, yeah, almost there. Should I turn it down so, more? Yeah, let's turn it's that really down. It's really going crazy yeah. here. 
And how's that he sounding now, Pilar? Yeah. <laughs> now we got That's it That's the sound I want. I like to pick herbs too for like yeah. salads, but oh. for something like this, I'm like, no, that's totally fine. Okay. So you want to get it again. What'd like, you do? Did you cut off the stems? I put the stems underneath. So I cut oh. them, cut the stems. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. by the way, I'm oh. grabbing this like before this? Yeah. I forget everybody and then just them so you under see it. Oh. Uh oh, she's saving her pasta water. <laughs> I like your today show pasta theme water. Mug. Okay, and then I put the stems under. So, yeah. So yes. I know it's uncomfortable, but yeah. just like you okay. can go slow and you're going to do a rough Because it's ready. Drew reports that the pasta is ready. All right. Okay. And Savannah, you're going to start putting the pasta in. Mm -hmm. And it's Ooh. totally fine that it has the liquid because yeah, that's just going to make a, a, a nicer emulsified sauce. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Look how beautiful that sauce is. Oh my gosh, this is, looks right? incredible. And I think you do need a little bit more pasta water, Drew. Would you oh, think? Just, aren't you just glad a you little, saved it, a Drew? Little bit, a touch. Give me a little splash. That's okay. great. Wow. Yeah. And is the shrimp just the very last thing I put on there? Yes. I like this big old skillet yeah. too. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Makes me feel like a real chef. Um, Savannah, you're gonna kill the heat. Okay. Done. And then you're gonna garnish with your chopped parsley. Right in the bowl, huh? Right in there. And I don't want to go crazy, right? Just a little like that. Just a, just a little for color, and then okay. you can give it a toss again. It's with the, the shrimp oh gosh, is it looks so good. Perfect. <laughs> like wow. it's ridiculous. And Perfect. how are we gonna plate it? We got a bowl for you. Okay. Now, okay. This, part, this is gonna be a little tricky. Um, because this thing weighs six billion pounds. Oh, watch out! Watch out! Okay, look. I think we did pretty good. Cool. Yes. Oh, I think we did perfect. Look at it. Wow, and then you. By can the way, vote. I feel like you should Lion King that now. <laughs> the ball. Oh! Yes. <laughs> wow. And then you can serve it with a little bit more fresh parsley, chili okay. flake, we'll lemon. Okay. Love it. Garnish it up. Just a little bit. We, yeah. we chopped those. Let's go. Yeah. Guys, shall we? Let's chow down. Ah! Let's do it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Does this look? I mean, this is our garden party. It's so pretty. It is really chowy. Yes. Okay. Please. My first duku. I've never had a duku before. Duka. The duka. <laughs> exactly. It's so good. Mmm. You really get those spices. You do. It's delish. In the back of the palate and through the nose. But. Mm. It's so cold and refreshing. Also, right? And then you have the pickle that comes through that is just like I a little floral. And Listen, I love that pickled rind. Yeah. I never knew I could feel that way about a watermelon rind. I'm really excited that you're saying that. Me too. That to this is a whole new world for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to show you um, some people call it a nest. Um, I'm really going to focus on the pasta. If I catch a little Clear shrimp in there, for you. I catch a little shrimp in there. So be it. What are we doing? We're going to make a little round ball. Well, you're supposed to make a pasta nest, but this is not working. And then oh. my tongs also won't go all the way to the... God darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you know what will really help? Let what? me try this again. Let me get it with a fork. Okay. Because that... Um, 
Like a fork spoon. I feel oh. like this is gonna, yeah. yeah. There, there you go. should work much nicer. Do you wanna nest there me? you go. I wanna nest you. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. And then you just kinda dip the ladle. There you go. Oh my gosh, fancy And then you pants. can unfork it. And then a little bit of shrimp. You're so classy. <laughs> Here. Thank there. you, yeah. Third All right, time I need third, a charm. Third time's a charm. I believe in you, Drew. Okay. Right. So. Let's see. I'm a oh no, you're down. nesting. Oh, there that's you your go. best nest yet. There you See? go. See, third time's the charm. Gonna, oh, and that then, is beautiful. That's so pretty. Oh, oh, yes. I'm chowing down. I can't wait yes, anymore. Yes, yes. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. You guys cooked that shrimp like perfectly. The shrimp came out real good. Real right? money. Yeah. Perfect. I agree. Money shrimp. Proud of us. And that like little pop from the shrimp mm. too, that baking mm. soda like really affects the texture, so it feels like super fresh. It does. Ladies. I'm so proud of us. And we raise a glass to your friendship. To friendship. To your friendship. Cheers. I'm Shop Today Editorial Director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. This is Shop All Day Accessories for All. Hey everyone, I'm Adriana Brock, and we are back today with a new episode of Shop All Day, all about accessories for everybody in the family. Accessories may be small, but they can make a big impact. We've rounded out some of our favorite picks that are instantly gonna upgrade your wardrobe, home, and your life. We've got everything from a simple style solution for your Apple Watch to a chic rattan bag that is a must have for summer. And see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop everything we're sharing with you today. Okay, so if you're in the market for a classic bag that you're gonna use year round, look no further. This LL Bean Tote might be as good as it gets for a bag that marries style and utility. The Bowden Tote open top bag is made with a sturdy canvas that can withstand the elements, whether you're on the beach, commuting to work, or traveling. It comes in a bunch of different sizes, so you can choose from regular or long straps too, which is my favorite part, and you can get it monogrammed, so everybody in the family can get their own. And the folks at LLB promise that their bag can hold up to 500 pounds, which sounds crazy, but when these bags came out in about 1944, they were originally used as ice carriers, so they are really built to last. And whether you're toting around your LL Bean bag, your travel bag, or a laptop bag, you're gonna want a Clippa bag hanger. Here is why. Unlike other purse hooks, you won't have to dig around because you keep it on the strap. It is so lightweight, and according to the brand, it is strong enough to hold 33 pounds. And according to the brand, thanks to a thin design and these non-slip foot pads on the ends, you only need half an inch for this to work its magic. That means you can hang your bag off thin edges, ledges, rails, and openings. And you're not limited to a flat surface, and that kind of versatility makes it a must-have for every bag. And whether you're working from home, heading to the office, the Shop Today team loves these puffy laptop sleeves from Bagu. We take our devices on the go everywhere, and the quilted cases actually come in a bunch of different colors, patterns, and three different sizes to cover everything from your tablet to your laptop, even your e-readers. These are amazing as an added layer of protection in your tote bag, in your backpack, and in case of any spills, the brand says that these are machine washable, which is great when you're on the go. And the designs are so cute. Okay, and let's talk about the trend that keeps on giving. I am talking about the fanny pack. It is stylish, functional, and an accessory you'll use nonstop all summer long. Lululemon's best-selling everywhere belt bag came out recently and it became so popular that the brand launched an extended strap size to be more inclusive. It makes it easier to wear however you want, whether it's a classic waist belt, a crossbody, or a shoulder bag style, but the design of the bag itself puts function at the forefront. It has a large zipper, and inside it is so roomy, it has a bunch of pockets so you can keep everything handy and organized. 
All right, let's talk about a small accessory that can make a big impact, a brand new Apple Watch band. I love my Apple Watch for tracking steps, activities, and all of those calendar reminders. So when I wanna make it feel new, this chic watch strap is perfect. I feel like I have a brand new watch and it looks great with my outfit and all my jewelry. This band is compatible with all Apple Watch models and you can choose from over 20 different styles. They're all made with a lightweight resin that's gonna keep your watch secure while adding a pop of color to any outfit. Next up, we have an accessory that everybody in the family is going to love. Let's talk baseball caps. You know, the unofficial classic American accessory. The sun shielding hat actually got its humble beginning as a sun visor on the baseball field. And today, it's one of the hottest fashion trends that we can't get enough of. You can always spot an athlete wearing one. The baseball cap is so universal that men and women can wear it every day as part of any casual outfit. This summer, one thing's for sure. The sun is gonna be out and you're gonna need a hat. So consider this affordable Old Navy cap. According to the brand, it is made with durable, 100% cotton twill fabric, and it has a curved visor brim, a fabric covered button at the crown, and those essential air holes. Okay, this next one I am personally excited about because I love this brand. It is the Kitsch Microfiber Towel Scrunchie Set. They're almost like mini towels for your hair. And here's how it works. According to the brand, microfiber material is really soft and tends to dry hair faster while helping to minimize frizz. So the scrunchie acts like a little towel to help absorb excess water. And according to the brand, this is what allows hair to air dry naturally and reduce frizz. They're great for everyday use, but also perfect for summer. You can pop one in your bag to take to the pool or the beach or travel. And now let's finish up by talking about shoes and socks. Yes, socks can make such a difference in comfort. And these are one of my favorite from New Balance. They are great because they are made with a fabric that the brand says offers cooling technology and moisture wicking to keep your feet nice and dry all day long. They come in an athletic low cut style with mesh ventilation that according to the brand is helping to cool and create that airflow. These are great for the whole family. And lastly, we have a wardrobe essential, a classic pair of white sneakers. You can never go wrong with a pair of white sneakers and these knit kicks from Kariuma are a favorite among the whole Shop Today team. They're available for men and women in 17 different colors for under $100. The brand says that these eco-friendly sneakers don't just look and feel great. They're made with bamboo, sugarcane, cork, and recycled plastics from heel to toe. But most importantly to us, they're so lightweight, and the brand says they deliver a low impact with every stride, which you need for all day comfort. Let's go through the products one more time. The L.L. Bean Boat and Tote Bag, the Clippa, the Bagu Puffy Laptop Sleeve, the Lululemon Everywhere Belt Bag, the Resin Apple Watch Band, the Old Navy Baseball Cap, the Kitsch Microfiber Towel Scrunchies, the New Balance Cooling Socks, and the Karyuma Off-White Knit Sneakers. That's it for Editor's Picks. Up next, lifestyle influencer Jasmine Snow is chatting with Mako and Lobu about some of her favorite must-have products to style your weekend and office looks. From backpacks to mules, we've got a lot of great products coming your way. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Fire. And 
good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hi there, welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. If anyone knows how to style an outfit, it's our guest today, Jasmine Snow. She's a style expert, and she's here to share her tips and tricks for elevating your look at the office or on the weekend. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, it's been so long. It's been so long, and I'm so excited that we're talking about accessories for all. So here's the number one question. When it comes to shopping for accessories, should I be looking for inexpensive pieces, or should I invest in my accessories? Well, what I always do is I always go for the inexpensive pieces. Here's the thing. I love to change it up, switch it out, change it with every outfit. So you don't want to spend tons and tons of money. And the trends change on the pieces that are classic. You're going to buy real jewelry if you're going for like diamonds or something like that. Of course, invest. But, you know, really save that for big gifts that you want to ask for. The other trendy stuff just... Do it where it's really inexpensive, affordable, and you can just have fun with it. And that's the whole idea, having fun. So let's speak about having fun. Can you mix patterns or prints or metals when it comes to accessories? I am all about the mix. I am about the mix on high-low, and I am all about the mix of metals. I think you can mix rose gold, regular gold, silver, gun metal, anything that you want. I think it goes, it is, as long as it works with your outfit and as long as you feel good about it, yeah. for it. Right, accessories make your whole outfit pop. You're so right. Let's dive into some of your picks. I'm so excited about these bobble bar hoops that you have here. Now, I see that they got a little sparkle, a little bling to them. Are they more special occasion or can you wear these every day? I love to wear these every day, but I think it's great because you can really dress them up for going out at night, on the weekend. I love that Baba Bar always offers a pack. They take all the work out of it. You don't have to do any of the mixing. Like, I love a good earring stack, and you kind of just don't have to think. It's already done. And when it's affordable like that, you can just mix and match however you want. All right, Jasmine, on to the next one. Some weekend picks. We have the barrettes from Lulu's. As soon as I saw them, I thought, okay, these are great for bridesmaids or a bride, but you can certainly dress these down as well, right? Yes, that was my first instinct. We're coming upon wedding season, and it's a really easy accessory to throw in your hair and kind of dress things up right away. But you can also wear this. I love the idea of wearing it sort of casually on the weekend, but you can dress it up as well to go out at night. I just think it's really cool to just throw in your hair with jeans and a tee, and it kind of just zhuzhes things up. It really does, and I like how you can just clip it into your hair and it's gonna stay in place all night long. All right, on to more fun weekend things, this mini bag. Okay, I'm obsessed with this. I love the detail. What would you pair this with? Isn't she so cute? Oh, I love yes. this one. Okay, I would pair this with everything, to be <laughs> completely honest. I love this as a weekend going out bag. Of course, it's a little mini bag, so it's perfect. It's not necessarily a clutch. It's this little top handle. We're seeing these structured bags everywhere. Mini bags are having such a moment right yes. now. But I do really like it for a daytime look too. Again, sort of that same thing as the barrette. If you want to elevate an outfit and you're just in something very casual, go for it with the cute bag. Like, why not? Why not? And I like that you can still fit in your essentials, right? Like my cell phone can fit in here as well if I'm going out for the weekend. If you can fit your phone, like that's the test. If yeah. you can fit your phone in it, you're good. You got everything else. 
I absolutely love this purse. This is great for the weekend. All right, so, so, so cute. All right, let's move on to items, accessories for the office. I want to start with the mules. Those would be great for like an everyday staple, right? Exactly. So right now we're all kind of moving from home, from the couch, back to the office. We want to be comfortable. And this is a great update on the flat and you know easing your way back into real shoes for the office it's very professional but what i love about it is got a little jewelry on it so you just a little bit of shine on the toe and it just makes things fun it really is fun as soon as i saw this i said okay this is great a transition piece right we're in spring right now but we're going into summer so so many different ways that you can style it Exactly. Like you don't want to wear your big clunky boots right now, but we're not exactly ready for open toe just yet. So it's perfect. You're exactly right. It's the perfect transition shoe. Absolutely. Okay. Let's move on to this backpack, which is great for the office. Jasmine, I pack my lunch, my magazines. I pack everything into my backpack. Tell me about it. Yeah. So people are really in transition all day long now. Our lives have completely changed. We're going from working in a cafe to home, to an office, to picking up our kids from school. You maybe have your lunch, your computer. So it's really great to have a great big bag that you can put all of that stuff into, but it still is sleek and chic and it looks like it's an actual fashion piece and not just like your old school backpack that you threw on. Absolutely. Can I tell you a secret? I also looked at this. I have a couple of friends that are pregnant and I thought this would be a great like diaper bag. Is that crazy? No, I carry a diaper bag backpack all the time. And it's really nice because then my husband doesn't mind carrying it and it's easy for him to grab too. It's honestly, it is the best diaper bag for mom. It really is. I love a piece that is multifunctional. Speaking of multifunctional, this necklace right here is like the best of both worlds, right? Because you have different designs and detail. Do you wear it as is or would you stack it with other jewelry? Stacking is kind of my jam. I'm really into tons of gold chains right now. As you can see, I'm really always piling them on. But I think it's really nice to be able to mix your personal pieces in with chunkier, trendier pieces. It does work if you're going to like a wedding or something a little bit more dressy and you need it to be cleaner. It definitely works on its own. Don't get me wrong. You can do that if you'd like. But I just think it's really fun to kind of mix things up, have a little bit of sparkle, have a little bit of chains. And just, again, like, do your thing. Whatever it is that you feel good in, go for it. Go for it. And we're talking about accessories for all. I love how this is ageless as well. My mom can wear it. My sister can wear it. I can rock it. This is a great pick. Yeah, and it's accessories for all, but accessories for everything. So you can rock it to work. You can go on the weekend, go out. It really works. It's very multifunctional, like we said. Oh, you are everything. Thank you so much for joining us and dropping these tips about accessories for all. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks, you too. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. We have the bobble bar earring set, the rhinestone barrette, the beaded mini bag, the motor chain mules, the backpack, and the bobble bar necklace. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Chassie Post is gonna share her favorite accessories in Style Finder. Ooh, I can't wait. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
and systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and this episode is all about accessories. I've got some must-have items that will instantly upgrade and elevate your look in a pinch. And remember, see that QR code in the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's start off with one of my absolute favorite trends of the summer, rattan. Rattan is actually the name of a climbing palm vine that can be woven in different styles to give you that fabulous straw basket look that we've seen so much of this season. And I love how the natural woven palm brings an organic and beachy touch to anything you pair it with. I mean, it almost looks like a little picnic basket. And these great bags go anywhere. Dress them up or down, wear as a crossbody with everything from your bathing suit and a cover up to shorts and a tee. Or dress it up by knotting the strap like a little top handled bag. I love that. And I recently went to a fancy event and I carried a rattan bag and I absolutely loved how it looked with my more formal look. Picnic or to the party. This is such an adorable bag. Now on to one of the hottest sandal trends out there for the summer, the H sandal from The Drop. And this is such a chic and easy option. And it's one of the most popular slides out there for two reasons. Number one, I mean, check out this really cushy footbed, right? So much more comfortable than the average flip-flop. And number two, the style. The H style we have seen absolutely everywhere. And what I think is so great about these is they go with everything. I mean, I love this fabulous metallic and this patent orange. I mean, bright's one of the biggest trends we're seeing this season. And of course, the classic white. I think a great idea is to leave these by the door and no matter where you're going, you slide on into these and you're gonna look chic. So next, we've got a mega trend when it comes to hair accessories today, the claw clip. And yes, as you have probably heard, the 90s are having quite the moment in the fashion and accessories world these days. But these little claw clips from H&M aren't your average 90s throwback. First of all, they come in a set of four, and I think they're so beautiful actually pretty glamorous, which is not something you hear in relationship with claw clips every day. And what I think makes them so special is these beautiful materials. I mean, we have a faux tortoise shell and even faux mother of pearl and even almost like the great resin Bakelite from the 50s that we've seen so much of out there in accessories this season. And then they're even elevated with little pops of gold. And you can choose between four different colorways here. And they're so easy to use. You just clamp them in. And you can wear them in lots of different ways. I mean, you can wear a couple on one side. I love that. You could wear one on either side, kind of as you would a bobby pin or a barrette. Or go for all four and do a fun 90s inspired updo. On to another accessory trend, jewelry. Now, first up, we've got earrings and juicy fruit is the epitome of summer. And this vitamin C set 
is as festive as it is fabulous. I mean, believe it or not, fruit has been a big jewelry trend for the past two seasons, and I absolutely love it. It's so fresh and fun, and I always appreciate an accessory with a sense of humor, right? These are really, really fun. So you can choose between five sets that include all of your favorite fruits. You can choose between sparkly grapes and cherries, lemons, pineapples, bananas, oranges, tangerines, and more. Now you can wear them as a matching pair, right? Or why not mix and match the fruits? You can do a cherry on one ear and a tangerine on the other. Or if you have multiple piercings, you can even look like you've got a glamorous summer fruit basket on your ear. And they also make really adorable and affordable gifts. They come in this little gift box and they're great for teens or adults. Next, bracelets. And this sheet collection comes ready for the party. The arm party, that is. Yes, the layering AK party trend is having quite a moment when it comes to jewelry this season. And we are here for this trend. I love it. You know, more is more, right? So this set comes with four of the moment gold colored bracelets that give that arm party in an instant. It includes two chunky chain bracelets. Yay, I love chains, you guys have heard it here. Chains are a massive trend. One pretty cable style bracelet and one simple plastic bangle. So you can wear these all together or you can wear them on their own or you can even invite pieces you already own to the party and don't be afraid to mix and match metals. I love gold and silver and rose gold together. And they have a not to believe price. You get all four for under $10. What a steal. Plus they have a classic look that works with any style. Now, over the past few seasons, we've seen a real focus on the waist and I'm obsessed with these chic wide belts from H&M. They give you that perfect summertime cinch. Plus they bring in another big trend that we've been seeing, crochet and woven materials. You know those really wide belts in leather that have been so popular, you know, in the fall and winter? Those are great, but they can be really heavy when the temperatures heat up. And I love a big square buckle. This buckle detail you're gonna be seeing absolutely everywhere this summer. And this belt is a little bit over two inches wide and it's made extra long, which I think looks so fabulous hanging down. Or you can always just tuck it in the back for a more tailored look. And I love to use these wider belts to sort of cinch in and give a new look to those oversized shirts that have been such a big trend. Also, a wide belt is really flattering because it cinches in and shows off our waist. And this belt is under $20. So lastly, let's finish up with one of our favorite beauty accessories. And trust me when I tell you, we are not alone in our exuberance for this extensive set. Now this is the BS Mall 14 piece makeup brush set. And it is a serious bestseller with over 96 thousand ratings on Amazon. I mean, that's one of the highest ratings I've ever come across. And here's why shoppers are so obsessed with these. So first of all, you get a comprehensive collection of 14 makeup brushes. That's amazing. That's under a dollar a piece. So you really can apply makeup like a pro because you've got the right tool for the job, which I have found over the years makes a huge difference in my makeup application. And this set comes with everything from eyebrow, eyeshadow, and eyeliner brushes to lip brushes, to blending and contouring and highlighting brushes and more. Plus, they're really pretty. I mean, look at the rose gold. And you know that saying there's an app for that? <laughs> well, with this set, you can be sure that there's a brush for that, no matter the makeup look you're trying to achieve. And lastly, I am such a big fan of this case. Look, it's great for traveling. You put the two pieces together, throw it in your bag. But I also like that you can use it as we've done here. You can break it apart and use it to store your makeup brushes on your counter. And it is always so much easier having all of your brushes right in front of you rather than having to dig through your makeup bag. So let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. So we've got the Zara Rattan box shape bag, the drop flat sandal, the H&M hair claws, the vitamin C fruit basket stud earrings, 
the dainty bracelet set, the braided waist belt, and the 14-piece makeup brush set. And that's a wrap on Style Finder and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. Janelle, it's great to see you. Oh, it is great to be seen. Can we just start with this look, this outfit? Mm. Tell me who we're wearing, what we're wearing, mm. all of it. Well, we are officially in the Memory Librarian book. This is a look inspired by the lead character, Cichette, uh, who is the Memory Librarian. And this is custom uh, Dead Lotus Couture. So I worked with uh, Nanja who is the designer. She and I went back and forth on this look together. We took an informal poll. We've been doing this show for six years. You officially are the coolest human being I've ever sat across from. So just wanted to give you that honor oh, here and wow. thank you very much. Well, Cheers to I that. would love to take that, <laughs> but I'm an android. Right. So I'm not 100% human. Right. So I have to give that to someone else. Yes, fair but enough. But I appreciate the offer. <laughs> I'm honored. My human side is honored. So I can't wait to dig in and talk to you about this extraordinary book. I was saying to you, okay, Janelle Monet, we want you to come out with a book. Maybe it's a memoir. You have an amazing personal story as well. And you said, I don't think so. I want to write something a little more challenging. So just for people who are thinking about picking this up, is it even possible <laughs> in, a, in a little while to explain what this book is about? So uh, The Memory Librarian, this book, this short story collection was grown from the same soil as Dirty Computer, my 2018 album and film that I released. They drained us of our dirt and all the things that made us special. And then you were lost, sleeping, and you didn't remember anything at all. The Memory Librarian deals with this totalitarian society uh, regime New Dawn. New Dawn is kidnapping dirty computers, people who will not assimilate, people that refuse to not walk in their full authenticity. New Dawn's taking their memories, swiping them clean, and giving them new identities. And so each story deals with protagonists, black and brown folks, folks in the LGBTQIA plus communities who just refuse to assimilate. The story, I mean, obviously there are echoes of your own story in here, I think it's fair to say, given the groups that are represented in this book, and also your being, if I may, a dirty computer yourself, which, is, which is to say you're not going to be something that the culture wants you to be or the music business wants you to be. So do these stories all come from somewhere within you? Yeah, I'm, I'm sprinkled in a, in, in, in a lot, um, but it's a community, you know, and that was super important, community, uh, making sure that not just my own personal story was represented, but there's so many of my friends and my family members, um, my friends in the trans community that I wanted to highlight in the non-binary community. Like, there's so much of us, there's so much intersection, and I wanted to get into that nuance. I worked with Elia Don Johnson on The Memory Library, and, uh, which, you know, it was a thought experiment that I had. I was like, what if there was this memory librarian, this, this, this black woman, who literally kept and stored the memories of everybody in the city. Like she knew their pasts. Before, you know, before they were wiped clean, she knew who they were. And 
this memory librarian wants to fall in love. But how do you fall in love when you know everybody's secrets? Mm -hmm. And um, Time Box I worked on with Eve L. Ewing. It speaks about time poverty. For black and brown folks who have been um, having to spend a significant amount of time just trying to reach the American dream and go find the boots to really pull, you know, ourselves up from, from with our bootstraps, whatever that whole terminology means. Like, mm. really thinking about if you could get time back, reclaiming my time, in the words of Maxine Waters, <laughs> how would you reclaim your time? And so Eve and I had a wonderful time doing that. And then, you know, Cherie Renee Thomas, I worked on a short story with uh, Time Box Altered. I worked on um, uh, uh, one with Danny Lore called Nevermind and Save Changes with uh, Johanka Delgado. I'm so fascinated by the, sort of the origins of this story because it's an allegory that speaks as you just laid out to everything that's happening in our culture right now. But it's such a different way to tell the story than just coming out and saying it to create this place in the future mm. where all these things happen. It's kind of like your music, too. It's always original. It's always interesting. How was this born? Where does the dirty computer concept come <laughs> from? Where does all this come from within you? A real living nightmare. I had a nightmare. Um, and I woke up and I had my iPhone and I just had to, like, record everything I could remember. But I had a nightmare that I was at a movie theater, went to go get popcorn, um, was walking down to my seat, and this usher was like, come with me, come with me. They're kidnapping people. Come through this back entrance. And I was like, get away from me. I want to watch my movie. And I started to sit down in my seat, and I was taken. And I was kidnapped, full memories erased, mm. and I woke up a completely different person. And so, as I started to re think about it and, and try to figure out what does this mean? What is this? Going? I was in the middle of working on this album, and I just connected my identity to so many people's identities who are being erased. Mm -hmm. This whole concept is pretty meta, you know. I wrote it. It's you know it's supposed to be fictitious, but look what's going on with Greg Abbott, with uh, Governor DeSantis. They are putting into law that you can't even talk about the LGBTQIA plus community in schools. There are schools and states that you can't talk about race in. The erasure of identity is happening right now, systemically. Like people are, are doing that to kids, to teenagers, and to families, and it's wrong. And I'm encouraging young people to read it, to find solace in it, to find hope and find strength, and those who are in the position of power to fight back against um, these folks who don't recognize us as complete human beings, who deserve to feel seen, to feel heard. The book is such a uh, compliment to and a part of the activism that you've already been doing for, for a long time that's so central, I think, to your life. Um, is it nice to have the voice and the platform because of your talent, writing, <laughs> singing songs, that people will listen to you and people are going to go buy this book and that you can get that message out? I hope that people buy the book. You know, like, everybody may not necessarily love me, and that's fine. I come to, that's good. You know, one of the things that I wish I would have known uh, early in my career is that everybody won't love you, and that's okay. I love me. And I love what it is that we're doing with this book and with the story. Since I was, you know, a child, I'm timeless. But I'll say since I was a child, um, I was writing short stories. I was writing science fiction short stories. I had one where <laughs> uh, this alien came and was talking to a plant through photosynthesis and ended up taking my whole neighborhood and my grandmother <laughs> with them. How old them. were you when you wrote this? I Your kid? Shoot, yeah I, yeah, I had to be in elementary wow. school. Wow, so the brain I was reading was a lot of R.L. Stein's Goosebumps yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I went on to write for the young playwrights, uh, the Coterie Theater, where we would write these short stories, and if they were good enough, the local actors would perform them. So I've always had a love of um, literature, of storytelling, and that's what I feel like my 
my thing is in music and fashion and art is like telling stories, mm. right? The Bible tells stories. You see how many people are obsessed with all of the stories in the Bible. You know, that's how you keep the name of Jesus alive. And I'm just trying to do the Lord's work. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. You have been such an inspiration to so many people, the kind of people you write about in this book, to black and queer people in this country. Mm -hmm. um, was that a difficult decision for you to step out front and say, this is exactly who I am, mm. take me or leave me, <laughs> and to, have, to, to put that out there, or were you completely comfortable with that? The thing about who I am is we change. This version, I think being a human is performative. I'm performing a version of who I think Janelle Monae should be. Mm. Every day I wake up and I'm making choices about how I move, what I do, based on the feedback that I got about who I should be. Mm. I don't represent everybody. You know, I can only speak from my truth where I'm at at that time, right? And if it resonates, if it connects, I'm always like, yay. But um, a lot of me talking out loud to the world is really for myself. Like, I need to say it. Because in my head, I've probably said mean things about myself based on what the world tells me I should be and, you know, my own things that I probably have had to heal through, which I have. Um, but it's so much negative talk that it's like you kind of overcompensate. You're like, I'm here. I'm right here. I'm present. This is who the I am, you know? Um, so that's always really good to get that out, yeah. And we were talking before we started here just about getting to a place, and you touched on it a minute ago, in your life, in your career, mm -hmm. where you can just say it. Be yeah. who you are and not worry about how people exactly. are gonna react to it. That's gotta yeah. feel great to be care. where you are. <laughs> you can't, yeah. you, I, I think I care like a good, even if it was 5%, those are the moments that I'm most disappointed. I'm like, why did you care about that? Why did you allow that to steal your moment? But. I mean, I'm like, I'm floating right now. I'm in the most carefree, I don't have anything to prove space that I've ever been in as an artist. And you can feel it in my music, my conversations, and it's so honest to just like, yeah, I'm like, man, why wasn't I this present? I spent so much time in the future and worried and anxiety and all of those things, but this is it. This is the trip, you know? This is the, 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 the gold. This is where I should have been, and now I'm doing everything I can to like stay present. I feel like I'm on my second Earth life. Oh. Yeah. And that started recently? Yeah, because there's life when you haven't healed. Like, you live that life. Mm. But like, after you've healed, that's a whole nother life. Mm. You know, it's like, you have a clear, you have a clear vision, and that's where I am right now got to feel great. I mean, there are so many people who will listen to that and say, okay, it's easy for Janelle Monet to say that. Mm -hmm. She's achieved this level of success. How do I get to that place mm. in my daily life where I'm not worried about what people think about me? How do I get to that second life that you're talking about? What would you say to fans of yours who say, 
I want to be like her. I think I wasn't trusting my own voice. Hmm. That's what I think was happening. Like, how are you going to let somebody tell you who you are more than you telling yourself who you are? Like, I know myself. I know my truth. Like, and I think that's where it comes from. You start thinking that somebody else has the answer or the formula. Like, people can give you advice. People can say, oh, but when I get a gift, an idea, that's between me and the creator. It wasn't a big mass email sent out. Everybody, here's what Janelle needs to do. What do you guys think? Like, they wasn't involved on the deal, on the front end. So why am I doing that? Mm. And then I think when I think about, yeah, so trust your own voice over that. Yeah. It, it, like, period. You gotta get to a point where you trust you more than you trust them. And another thing I thought about, I was like, you know, the world judges us for whatever reason. There's always gonna be somebody playing that role of the judger, yep. right? Why do I need to pile on and judge myself? Mm-hmm. That position is already taken. Go do something else. So that's how I kind of look at that too. That's so, so well said. Have you always had that level of um, confidence and self-assured view of your own life going back to Kansas City when you were a kid and performing and all those things that does take some confidence for a child have you always felt this way a little bit I did yeah I was very confident as a child but then I lost it Hmm. because then you know too much when you start to get into middle school and high school you get feedback on what they what what the culture thinks is cool and if you're not the club you know you start second guessing yourself but I'm back to it I'm back to my child spirit you know that didn't that just wasn't concerned about what was to the left or to the right. It was always forward. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, is this? Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Your mother was a custodian, father a sanitation worker. Where did performance come in your life? Do you read anything into how that was born for you? Well, my dad also um, was a uh, musician and performer, and so I grew up in a house where if when I went to my grandmother's house, she was playing the organ, singing in church. My other grandmother was playing the piano, doing piano lessons, singing in church. So I never had a family that told me that I couldn't do this. Like, they always encouraged it, you know, and I'm thankful for that, because those are your, that's your first tribe. It's your first, like, fan, you know? They tell you, they let you know if it's, Good or not, I mean, even my, but my little sister would always be like, shut up. 
be quiet. <laughs> uh, and that would just make me want to, you know, do it, do it more. Of course, of course. And then eventually, you end up here yes. in New York for a little bit. You're so talented. You get the scholarship to come here. What was that like to go from Kansas City to turn up in New York City? It was a culture shock. Yeah. I went from like all black school, high school, minority school to being like the only black person <laughs> in my class here. And then it was like this big city. I commuted 40 blocks every single day or I lived on 140th in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. So I went to 72nd Street every day. I shared a bed and a room with my cousin. Um, yeah, I was I was struggling, but it made it just made me so much stronger. And it also told me what I didn't want to do. Right. I thought I wanted to do Broadway, and I'll probably end up doing it kind of on my own terms. I wanted to write something. I didn't want to do anything that anybody else had written because I wasn't really inspired by what I was seeing for black performers, the leading roles. It was kind of like the options were slim. So I moved to Atlanta, and that's uh, where I really started my own Wonderland Arts Society Arts Collective, where I met other people that looked like me that really had ideas like I had and also were teaching me things and we just were like let's just do this independently mm. let's write let's direct let's uh, act let's like become the you print not the blueprint mm. and so that's what I've been trying to do ever since I don't know how I'm doing but you're doing pretty well I mean you, you go to Atlanta Big boy sees you on stage. Yeah. What I love about that part of the story is you say they didn't try to make you into this mm -hmm. marketing object or to, to make, they allowed you to be who you are. Yeah. Which you've continued to be. Was there ever pressure along your rise to be someone else? Say, oh, you should maybe dress this way or make songs for the radio and all that. And if so, yeah. how did you ignore that of talk? Of course. Everybody thinks they're smart. <laughs> Everybody, and some people have really great ideas. But I mean, I just trusted me. I knew, I knew I was like, no, this is, there's a different way. And I think I had some meetings where I got told no. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, well, if I'm gonna walk in a room, I at least wanna be told no because I was being my authentic self. I don't wanna be in the room because of somebody else saying, do this, do that, do that. The other flip side of that though, is I think that it also made me feel like I had to prove something. Mm -hmm. I had to prove that, oh, I can talk about science fiction in my songs, I can dress like this, I can, just because I'm black, like, I don't have to just sing that type of music, I'm gonna be eclectic and da-da-da-da. And um, that was important because I felt like it was a cultural reset when I came out. A cultural reset. And people needed to see that particular image. I think now, when I look back, I'm like, man, I could have put my sword down. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to fight. I didn't have to spend so much of my career just fighting that I'm just going to prove. I got to prove this and prove that I can be successful in this way. And I have to do, you know, I can't, like, I was limiting myself. Even as, like, eclectic and if you listen to my albums and concepts, all of that, there were still moments where I didn't give myself permission to have fun hmm. because I felt like I needed to be serious and mm, just militant in a sense. And I'm just... I already went through like the anger of feeling like, man, I missed so many moments where I could have been having fun. So now this part of my life is going to be having fun. Something giving just, myself permission. Something you just fun. said just like, caught my ear. You said it was a cultural reset. Kind yeah. of when you came on the scene. What yeah. do you mean by that? I'm kind of doing this sort of retrospective on when I had first come out. But I think it was like, oh, it's a glitch in the matrix something new on the scene that doesn't look or feel or sound like anything. Yeah, they're, they may be inspired by it, but the way that they are using their energy is just different. And now, you know, everything will be different. Mm. And the people who inspired you, it seems to me, have that same energy. Is that fair to say? Prince, Stevie Wonder, Lauren Hill. There's a long list of Ooh, people I who love are all of them. right. They're kind of like you in that they didn't go with the grain. They brought something else. Is that why you were latched on to artists like those? Yeah, I mean, I, I used to be obsessed with Lauren Hill. I totally. mean, 
But I knew I could be her. Like, it's only one Lauren Hill. So I had to figure out how to be the best Janelle Monet. You know, how, how could I, um, what was my, what, what was the thing that I was going to uh, be bringing new? You know, I always want to come, like, what am I adding to our culture? What am I adding to the industry? What am I adding? What am I saying? Mm. So that was cool. But I mean, Prince and Stevie are just like mm. incredible humans. They never let their mystery or who they were, like the giants that they are musically, get in the way of their mentorship. And mm. I, I'm so thankful that early on in my career, I've been able to have them, you know, in my life. and. As people I can talk to. And isn't it crazy? I've talked to other artists and actors about this. You look up to someone as a kid when you're coming up, but really Prince or Stevie Wonder live in some other stratosphere in your mind, and then all of a sudden you're working with them and they're yeah. giving you advice on your album. Yeah. Is that a wild thing to make that leap into their world? Very. <laughs> <laughs> it was. But then you look at them, you say, These are these are people who, like myself, you know, just had a light, had something they wanted to say and an idea and you know maybe they it took some time and maybe home life wasn't perfect and um they just trusted their gut throughout those moments and they were anchored in knowing that it's much bigger than you mm. or me and that's what i always i feel most alone when i disconnect from everybody and i'm like i'm over here but i'm one with everything you know I'm one with everything and I think that they serve as a reminder and that music serves as a reminder that when we come together when we can be on the same like frequency that's when you feel close to God that's when you feel the universe that's when yeah I just feel like I'm a fabric in a larger quilt who meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time you were still in Kiev. Could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Something I've heard you say that really moved me, which is why you said you wear a tuxedo mm -hmm. often, which has become kind of a uniform for you. Mm -hmm. And it's... Uh, tied back to your childhood, right? Yeah. To your parents wearing uniforms. Working Would, class, yeah. Yeah, what does that tuxedo mean to you in that context? Yeah, when I put it on, I always think about my family. You know, my mom used to serve at banquets. She was a janitor, my dad, you know, a trash man. My grandmother cooked food for the county jail for 25 years. So I come from a hard working class family. I think that's why I'm big on community. I have 49 first cousins. Mm -hmm. All my aunts and uncles working class, like they work their ass off to make sure that their ne their kids, my cousins, all of us could have beautiful summers and picnics and um, we could go to amusement parks and all of that. So for me, I try to honor that in my work, you know, as much as I can. That's why this book, I wanted to bring a community of people, of writers with me could have done a memoir, a coffee table book, but this was better, mm. you know? And it's just instilled in me. It's like a gift and a curse in a sense, because you can work, 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 and you don't play, play, play. 
like I'm on that. I've worked <laughs> for a very long time yeah. and I was super serious. I, now I'm like, if we're not talking about vacation, <laughs> I don't want to talk. <laughs> I don't want to talk. Like we are supposed to be having the best earth experience of our lives right now. You know, why are we getting caught up in a rat race? Yes, mm. we have to work. We need to survive. We need to do all these things. We also need to make time to f around. Amen to that. Before I let you go, I have to ask you how the film roles fit into this puzzle. But we look at Moonlight and Hidden Figures and Knives Out 2. Very yes. excited that you're going to be in that. How do you view acting in this, this picture of your career, this quilt? I love getting into different characters. I told you, the human experience is performative. One time it freaked me out when I thought about it. I was like, this is one big play. We have reoccurring characters, some people in and out of our lives, some same archetypes come back. But I love acting. I love um, exploring the human condition. My hope is that we can turn some of these short stories into TV or film projects. That that would be cool. I would love that. And we're in talks. I was going to say, this feels like a series to me. Does yeah, it? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Let's make that mm. happen. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you for having me. It's a pleasure talking it's to you. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much. Hey there, friends. I'm Joe Fryer filling in for Carson. Happy to have you with us for today's Pop Start Plus. Coming up, the star of Our Flag Means Death, Reese Darby, who plays an aristocrat turned pirate. The HBO Max show just got renewed for a second season. Plus, any Marcel the Shell lovers out there? Jenny Slate is revisiting her beloved character in a brand new film. And later, it is a big week for Oscar winner Nicole Kidman, so we thought we'd dip into our vault for a look back at her starring role in Moulin Rouge. That's all ahead, but first, here's Chanel with today's pop star. First up, the Royals. This morning, the University of Cambridge unveiled the very first joint portrait of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Do you want to see it? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, William and Kate pictured side by side. Ooh. The Duchess in a gorgeous emerald gown, but of course, like this that. painting was commissioned last year and completed by award-winning British artist Jamie Corrath. It looks like a photo. Uh, I was say, it's it a really photo real gorgeous. Is. About the work, Corrath said he wanted to show the Royals as both relaxed and approachable. What do you think? Yeah, I think it? it's cool that they're not looking straight at us. Right. They're looking yeah. over there. I think what? it's something neat. It's how stunning. Long, how long I, do they have to pose for that? I don't I know, don't Al. Know. We'll have I to call and ask them. <laughs> so it currently, if you want to go see it, it yes. currently hangs in the UK's Fitzwilliam Museum, where members of the public can visit the artwork for the next three years before it finds a new home in other community spaces and gather galleries around Cambridgeshire. So mm -hmm. we want everybody to be able Very to nice. see it. Okay, so next up, Justin Timberlake, yeah, we want this the pop place. superstar known for his legendary dance moves, is asking fans to forgive some funny footwork at a recent DC show. Have you seen it? No. no. I don't even think it's that bad. Look at this. DC, keep your feet. I mean, it's, okay, it's a little jazzer side. Some yeah. of the kids, but I like it. Some of the yeah. kids are it's saying awesome. it looked like the hokey pokey. It's a little dad like. Okay. Well, it's so that he's Nigel. a dad. Yeah. So that viral well, video that does not look dad like to me. Well, or, I mean, oh, it looks like the best dancing. Yeah, it's like the Timberlake. Dad oh, it's Justin Timberlake dad dance. So that's yeah. the thing. So it, you know, listen, that video has gone viral okay. with the internet turning this into oh, no. TikTok trend poking fun at Jay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you think Justin is listening? So that yesterday he hopped on Instagram and issued an apology. Look at this. DC, I want to apologize to you for two reasons. Here and here. I had a long talk uh, with both of them individually um, and said, don't you ever do that to me again. Maybe it was the khakis. <laughs> it was a real khaki vibe. I'm going to make this up to you. Uh-oh. Oh. I can't wait to oh. see how he does that. Okay, that's yeah. good. But I mean, what, you'd have to find like a 14-year-old to show you the latest TikTok that's dance. That's pretty good. I mean, I mean. Our producer, Pete Breen, just said he's taking sexy back. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. We forgive Justin, but we're not the only ones. The mayor of D.C. What? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it goes on. responded to this. Should I consider a mayoral pardon of Justin Timberlake? Wow, well, wasn't that good? Everybody's <laughs> getting it at all. Wow. So anyway, we'll see what he comes up with next. All right, all right next up. Back to the Future, Marty what? and Doc 
headed to Broadway after success on London's West End. A musical based on the 80s blockbuster is riding a hoverboard over to the Great White Way. Yesterday, the show confirmed plans to open here in New York sometime next year. The songbook includes hits from the movie like Back in Time, The Power of Love, and of course, Johnny Be Good. That's not how you say it, but I sing it. <laughs> and no official opening date has been announced just yet. But we all know this isn't the first time Back to the Future live theater has landed in New York. Oh, boy. How could one forget Al Roker and Dylan? <laughs> This was a Tony worthy of performance. You did star in Waitress. There is a chance yeah, that they may call you because there's got happen. to be a if, little part for you. In if back every day. other legitimate actor has been whisked off the face of the earth, You'll be done. it's possible. Just a little part. You, sure. You would dig that. Oh, I'd you? love to. Oh my sure, God. Why not? Right. To be continued. All right. Speaking of back, uh, bringing back old favorite favorites, how about my big fat Greek oh, wedding? I love that. This week, uh, actress Nia Vardalos announced that production has begun on my big fat Greek wedding three. Wow. Revealing this time around the cast is on location. They're actually in Athens, Greece. Uh, plus, she shared that for the first time in the franchise's history, she's directing the project, too. Wow. Previously, Nia wrote the scripts for both the original movie and its 2016 sequel. And even though it's been two decades since we met her wacky Greek family, we hope they haven't changed too much because we need more moments like this. Ian is a vegetarian. He doesn't eat meat. He don't eat no meat. No, he doesn't eat meat. What do you mean he don't eat no meat? <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. I make lamb. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna, it's going to be good. No word yet, though, on when Wedding uh, 3 uh, will be released. Remember, all the so good. remember the Windex? Everything. Oh, yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. Windex. Yes. I love yeah. that. Oh, oh, wait, we have one more. Oh. Diane Keaton. Oh, bonus. Of course. The Oscar-winning actress is doing a reverse 13 going on 30 in the new trailer for the upcoming comedy Mac and Rita. Keaton plays a 30-year-old who is accidentally transformed into a much older woman. So actress Elizabeth Lail plays Keaton's younger self, a struggling author named Mac, who finds that life actually gets easier when she becomes what she considers old Aunt Rita. Here's a peek. Welcome. Lay down, Moonshine, and think about who you want to be. I'm a 70-year-old woman trapped in the body of a 30-year-old who just needs a minute to rest! Oh! Oh, my God! Somebody help me! This is not me! How are you supposed to grow old on the French Riviera if you're 50 years ahead of me? Matt, you are scheduled to cover the Pilates event post-pictures. Post -picture. <laughs> because you were party, they will think you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> And let's reset. Let's Oh, be good. I like that. It's like Rita. a Freaky Friday yes, kind of thing. But reverse. But reverse. Yes, yeah. yeah, scheduled to hit theaters in August. Oh, so there you go. Don't we all feel like a younger person inside? Sometimes you don't. You, I mean, sometimes I feel I'm like I'm still a teenager. I look exactly. at myself and I'm like, when did all this happen? I, know. <laughs> I get it. Now to the reason we call this show Pop Start Plus. We have even more headlines for you. First up, John Mulaney. Last night, the comedian stopped by Late Night with a very special gift for host Seth Meyers: a brand new suit. Apparently, John thought Seth needed a wardrobe intervention from his recent casual dress code. You remember 18 months ago when you and all the all those people tricked me and confronted me? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. said my life was going downhill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I needed to make some changes. Uh -huh. Let's talk about the way you dress on air. Oh, okay. Uh, we're, we're not working from home no, anymore. No, no. You're not in an attic yeah. in, in Albany or wherever you go when you're not here. Yeah. Um, you're still dressing like you uh, had a date and didn't want to wear the same clothes at work, so you stopped at the Gap in Astor Place and yep. bought a sweater. <laughs> so does John Mulaney have a future in fashion? Well, we're going to have to check back in with Seth tonight and find out if the intervention was a success, but something tells me Mulaney should not quit his day job. And finally, Elvis. Only one more day until the highly anticipated biopic finally hits theaters. And in the latest look at the film, country superstar Casey Musgraves is giving a peek at the Elvis soundtrack for the movie. Musgraves covers the King's tender melody, Can't Help Falling in Love. Take a look at the new music video set to clips from between Austin Butler's Elvis and Olivia de Young's Priscilla. Catch Elvis in theaters starting tomorrow. 
Those are your Pop Start Plus headlines. Still to come, a closer look at a show that it is sure to make you laugh. Our flag means death. Stay with us. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. Actor Reese Darby stars in the HBO Max show Our Flag Means Death, just renewed for season two. And he spoke to us about the crazy shenanigans that viewers enjoyed in its first season. Our Flag Means Death is loosely based on a true story about an aristocratic man, a very wealthy landowner in 1717 who lived in Barbados, who decided to have a midlife crisis and leave everything he had and go and become a pirate. You upended your entire comfortable life to become a pirate. Very odd indeed, but not only did he head to the high seas, he then um, encountered the greatest pirate of them all, Blackbeard, and uh, they got along. Well, it's the opposites attract thing, I think, as well, obviously, but they wanted to both be each other. Blackbeard really kept his devilish ways in mind and was going to, you know, steal his identity. So it was when they started to really bond that he realized, uh, maybe I don't want to do that. And they started to get inside each other's heads and reveal that they had similarities with their upbringing and their, uh, their, their fathers and what drove them to be who they are. And so it was those connections that made them closer. So Steed, uh, yeah, he's a gentleman, he's a man of wealth, and he's a kind soul, but very lost. He kills with kindness. Oh, right, so you're the g gentleman pirate then. Well sussed! He had a, a bad father experience, that's for sure. Um, and I think he didn't want to be in the state he was in with his uh, marriage, which was organized. You know, part of the aristocracy is that they do what they're told. And so he wasn't happy. And he would escape through reading and fantasizing about uh, adventure. So he didn't really know what he was doing. But you've got to give him something for the courage to live again uh, and to not just um, accept what you have. You know, we only live once, but Steed, he lived twice. Steed sewing up really is just over the top and things that aren't necessary, including most of the things he's wearing, but they feel good. They make him feel good. So he wanted to make the pirate ship the same, uh, in the same way. So he built a library on the ship, obviously, because he is an avid reader. He thought everyone could read, but really it's only him and maybe one or two others. This is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, who brings an entire library to sea? And he has a fireplace. A ridiculous idea with, you know, on board a ship that can easily catch fire because there's candles everywhere. He's got an auxiliary wardrobe for all his uh, extra outfits that he definitely doesn't need. And uh, yeah, I think it's those little flourishes on the ship that 
sort of keeps him happy because, you know, he's so out of his comfort zone in the world he's living in. I think my favourite part is definitely dressing up and improvising comedy. Those are my two favourite things. And just working with a great cast, an ensemble group of people from different parts of the world. We all had the same vision, and that was to make something beautiful, funny, and uplifting. It's a power move. Make people feel underdressed, and suddenly you're the one in charge. I would love to improvise as much as possible, but unfortunately the scripts were really good, and so we had to stick to them. Uh, but we did get time to improv off the scripts now and again. I just like doing it. Um, and also, when you're with Taika, he's very improv happy. So uh, when we work together, we do a lot of scenes together, we pretty much say whatever we want half the time. <laughs> I think my favourite scene so far to shoot with Taika was uh, during episode 7, I think, uh, when we are on the treasure hunt. And that's when we get quite close and we... Um, yeah, we're sitting around the fire, and you'll see that scene where we're talking about opening a restaurant, I think. I'd come to your restaurant. You might not get in. It's going to be very popular. And, uh, yeah, that was all made up on the spot, and I can't believe we uh, didn't crack up during it. Taika and I, you know, we can do comedy till the cows come home. That's easy. But getting deep and um, personal and dramatic is something that we don't often do. So the scenes, like for example in episode 6, where you know it, it really hits home hard with, with Blackbeard, uh, when he realises you know, the crack and, um, and what he did to his dad, how he ended up killing his dad. I'm not a good person, Steve. That's why I don't have any friends. Hey, I'm your friend. It was genuine because we both have father issues ourselves and so it was kind of uh, it was yeah the parallel between uh, fiction and fact and life and and creativity was so so close that um, it was it was one journey for sure that we we both shared together and, and you can see that I think in the in the show so some of those emotions are real hard to pick a favorite scene I think a personal favorite would be right at the beginning just walking down those stairs, commanding my uh, crew for the first time, looking ex extravagant and giving the uh, what, we're what we're about to do, about to do will be perilous, perilous speech. That was fantastic because we did that on day one and it was the first time I, I had met everyone uh, on, on the cast and so it felt real to me and getting these ridiculous reactions back from them and then coming together with our little slogan, we, we talk, talk it through, through as a crew. As a and uh, that kind of really summed up the whole show for us because no matter what adventures we would go on, you know, I felt like we would talk it through. And it's, it's getting in touch with your emotions, which, you know, men have always had trouble doing. Uh, and 300 years ago, I mean, I'm sure they really had trouble doing it then. And so to, to modernize it and to really uh, get to grips with that idea, I think, is really mentally healthy. I think viewers will definitely see that if you get outside your comfort zone and take a risk and use courage and use a little bit of confidence, just get it from wherever you can, even if it's just your outfits, you can change your life and you can go places you never thought you'd go and make your dreams come true just by being around people, being positive and yeah, never giving up. And I think there's something there for all of us to take. Our thanks to Reese. You can watch season one of Our Flag Means Death on HBO Max. Up next, the delightful and hilarious Jenny Slate's visit to the third hour of today. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. 
After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. Back in 2010, Jenny Slate wrote and voiced a short film featuring Marcel the Shell, a tiny seashell with one googly eye and minuscule shoes on its feet. The film went viral on YouTube, but now Slate's adorable creation has a feature-length film. She told us all about it in the third hour. This morning, we are catching up with an actor whose resume includes a little bit of everything. That's right. Jenny Slate has taken on roles ranging from our own Hoda Kotke <laughs> on Saturday Night Live <laughs> to scene stealer Mona Lisa in Parks and Rec and a number of animated characters like a favorite in our house, Tammy Larson in Bob's Burgers. Mm -hmm. Well, now Jenny is taking her tiniest role to the big screen in Marcel the Shell with shoes on. We'll let the little guy introduce himself. Hello, my name is Marcel. My heart thought it's not the first time I've done that. My name is Marcel, and I'm partially a shell, as you can see on my body, but I also have shoes and um, a face. So I like that about myself, and I like myself, and I have a lot of other great qualities as well. <laughs> I mean, like, how are you just sitting down one day and you go, oh, I have this idea. You know what I mean? Because it was, what, mystery. 2010? Yeah. It was this three-minute video. Yes. And the rest is history? I guess so. I, I mean, I, I really, I was doing this little voice over a weekend when um, I was sharing a hotel room with, like, five friends. We were all trying to save mm -hmm. money, and I felt really squished, and I started doing the voice, and we just thought it was funny. And so Dean Fleischer Camp, who directed the feature film and, and wrote it with me, um, made a little short film and played it for ten people, and someone wanted to see it again, so he put it on the Internet. And then now we're here. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So did, did the voice voice come first and then they created the shell or did you see the shell and then create the voice? Yes, yeah, so the voice came first and we knew that it was small and uh, Dean started asking me more questions about myself and I guess and the character kind of started to just sort of emerge and and he had a bunch of found objects like a shell and a googly eye and um, went to the toy store and bought a Polly Pocket ripoff like Polly Pocket and <laughs> sort of like stuck it together and, and made Marcel made his <laughs> I think he looks really good. So He's cute. Could you give us a little Marcel? Sure. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, Al, what do you want me to say? Um, do you, what uh, kind of a day is it for Marcel? Oh, for, for me, it's a gorgeous day because I, I think that morning television is a really fun way to be chatty and start your day, but also I can say hi to my family. Hi, everyone. <laughs> They're so proud. It's just uh, so is, now, cute. is your family other little mollusks? <laughs> They're, they're a, a, a collection of creatures. Um, like, for example, one of my cousins actually is a Cheeto. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I mean, we're all different. We're all yeah. different. Yeah. Not a Cheeto. <laughs> yeah. I, what's so cool about this, you know, stop motion. I, I just, I love that type of animation. It's a long process, though. It is. Um, and even just the whole idea itself, how long did it take you to get from the voice and coming up with the character to actually putting her out there, or him out there. Yeah, well, once we found our partners in making the film, the, the wonderful producers that we had, um, it took about three years to get the audio playset. Like, everything you hear Marcel say, that was all improvised off of a treatment that then was turned into a script that was written and then was improvised off of, like, many layers of that. Then we made an animatic, then we did stop motion. I mean, uh, then we did the live plays and then stop motion. So it's, this is years, seven years of work wow. that you're seeing. So beyond Marcel, 
Did you grow up making voices or doing voices? I mean, has this been in you for a while? Not just Marcel, but just this talent. I think um, it's nice that you think it think of it as like a talent and not like a syndrome. <laughs> but I, um, <laughs> yeah, I always, you know, really liked voices and I liked characters with unique voices. Like, you know, I always loved Pee Wee, for example, oh. and um, was so fascinated by the voices on on Sesame Street, Grover and Big Bird. And and I always found a, a kinship with them. I think mm. it just That's was there for me. Yeah, That's awesome. And you're a mom to one and a half year old Ida, who just yes. turned one and a half yesterday. Day. Yes. Uh, do you do the voice? Oh, I was just about to say. Your, husband, your hubby there. Uh, that's my uh, husband. <laughs> do, do you do do you read stories to her and stuff and do voices or? I do, and she really likes the um, the Marcel voice, uh -huh. which is sure. so gratifying. I just, like, <laughs> want her to like everything about right. me, you know, which I'm sure is a dangerous game. But um, <laughs> yeah, I read to her, I sing to her in it, and um, so far she's a fan. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, so everybody's I mean, really a fan of this. That has to feel wild. It is very, very exciting. I think it's a good moment to remember also that, like, generally I like my life as it is day to day, although I appreciate the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the support. It's like... Yeah, what do you do with that? It, That's it's amazing. It's just excellent. That's awesome. Yeah. It's and your husband actually has a pretty cool job, too. Yeah. Up in Massachusetts, a gen he r runs a general store? Yes. Well, he's a writer, and um, he also owns Duvall's General Store. There Look it is, that. down the street Ooh. from our house. That's so yeah, cool. It's beautiful. It's um, the oldest general store in the United States. Wow. And it has a bookstore in it, and you can even buy his book in there. That's <laughs> right awesome. Now. What's the name of his book? His book is called Six Walks, and it's out right now. It's got a great review in The New Yorker. It's beautiful. It's uh, yeah. So Rally Tomatoes and the New Yorker. You guys are just like not bad. Checking it all off. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It's Thank so you. fun Thanks, to have you Jay. here. Thanks for Marcel having me. Marcel the Shell with Shoes on is in select theaters this Friday and nationwide, July 15th. Nothing like a dose of Jenny Slate to get you through the day. Coming up, we are heading back to 2001 for a Moulin Rouge blast from the past. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. It is a big week for our friend Nicole Kidman. Not only did she celebrate a birthday this week, she is also celebrating her 16th wedding anniversary with husband Keith Urban. In Nicole's honor, we pulled a fun moment from our vault that finds her speaking about starring and singing in 2001's Moulin Rouge. Nicole, when I went to this movie, I walked in, sat down, expecting kind of a dark, moody period piece. Come and get me, boys. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I hear the sound of music, your song, uh, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, and I thought, wow, this is totally unexpected. <laughs> I mean, do you think that's part of the movie's appeal? Yeah, I mean, people are coming out saying that I've never seen anything like it. Everyone thinks it's going to be this sort of period drama that I'm sort of singing, dancing, 
and acting and doing all these weird things to Fat Boy Slim and <laughs> rap music and it's I mean dancing in a corset weird isn't it, it, it but I mean, it I'm, somehow comes together I mean Baz Luhrmann who did Romeo and Juliet and Strictly is, Ballroom yeah, right and he's brilliant he went on a six-week trip where he backpacked through Europe and came and back and said, do you know what I want to do? I want to make a musical set in Paris in the Moulin Rouge, but it's going to be like Studio 54 was in the 70s. And everyone's going to go there and they're going to go wild and crazy and live out their fantasies. And it's going to be this young boy that falls in love with it. And it's just crazy. <laughs> and you go, OK, maybe it'll work. And then they dancing and then we come around there. Baz has this thing where he just like, likes to push you off the edge, you know? And so you'd come out and there'd be 600 extras and he says, and he'd say, actually, we're not going to use the recording today. We'd, I think it's more emotional when you sing live. And you just go, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Baz, anything for the film? We're making it sound like it's so incredibly weird because it's, but it's unexpected. But it has a, I mean, but in terms of being able to emotionally relate to it, I mean, people cry at the end. So that's... I it, did. Did you? Oh, Good. I did. I cried at the end. Because it's about love, and it's about losing love, and it's about, um, I mean, it's um, a young boy who's a poet who meets this girl who falls madly in love with her, and, and for whatever reasons, they can't be together. You sounded terrific. Oh. No, you really did. Your voice is quite beautiful. I was beautiful. very nervous. Were but, you? Yeah, but I was determined that I was going to sing every single note in the movie, because I, I couldn't bear to be revoiced or something like that. I mean, the reason to do it is to dance all your dance numbers, sing, sing every single note, and act, you know, so that you can say, yep, I did a musical, and I did it all. So fun to revisit a movie like that, one of my favorites. That does it for today's Pop Start Plus. Hope you learned something new. Come back and join us tomorrow, same time, same place. Hope to see you then. Oh my God, looky, looky. Hello. Look who's watching. It's Thursday. It's today all day. We're so happy you're turning into our digital show, Today in 30. Yes, and we have a lot of great segments for you in this half hour. First, though, we want to talk about something that everybody is experiencing, and that is pain at the pump. So is Congress going to agree to this federal gas tax holiday idea from the White House, and would it really help? We'll have everything you need to know. And then, Savannah, you have a very intimate conversation with the Home Edit's Clea Sher. We love her. Oh, and she's really yeah. inspiring. She opened up about this breast cancer journey. This is the first time she's come on TV to talk about it. She's super honest about her update days and her down days and she has a very important message for all women about becoming your own best health advocate. Yeah, she has some great advice. All that plus two words, Meredith Vieira. She was my co-host during the fourth hour. We got to hang out with someone who makes us all laugh, Maya Rudolph. Oh, that's good. That's Maya, electric. Mer I can't. Oh, anyway, let's get started. It is time for Today in 30. NBC's Maggie Vespa is in Chicago with more. Hey, Maggie, good morning. Hey, Hoda, good morning. As you can see, the sticker shock here remaining painfully real with prices at well over $6 a gallon. The national average still hovering around $5 a gallon. And President Biden says this federal gas tax holiday could lower prices by 18 cents or more. But his critics in Congress argue there's no guarantee. With the national average remaining near $5 a gallon, could Americans see some relief at the pump soon? It's desperately hurting my wallet right now. President Biden demanding Congress implement a three-month pause on the federal gas tax. The American people, they need relief now. The federal gas tax has been 18 cents a gallon for nearly three decades. The White House estimating if states pause their gas taxes too, prices could fall by a dollar. The president also blasting big oil, accusing companies of refusing to boost refining capacity after the U.S. banned Russian oil imports following Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you are paying for the product. Do it now. At least one CEO pushing back, saying oil production is at an all-time high. Biden's energy secretary set to meet today with multiple CEOs in search of solutions. But ahead of November's high-stakes midterm elections, congressional critics, including some Democrats, are not buying the president's plan. After the Federal Reserve raised interest rates for the third time this year, they argue a gas tax holiday could make record inflation even worse. This ineffective administration's big new idea is a silly proposal. In downtown Chicago, decades of pizza deliveries, Thank you for coming, Chicago's pizza on the both deep dish and thin crust could be ending for one family owned business. It's crazy. We haven't seen anything like this. Half the drivers at Chicago's pizza have quit, skyrocketing gas prices, devouring their paychecks. 
they're barely breaking even or they're not making enough. This, as many Americans dread every trip to the pump. What should the average American, in your mind, be taking away from this back and forth about these painful gas prices? I think it's uh, the president uh, uh, appears to be trying to provide some relief, but there's also a uh, cons to this, and that is that it could exacerbate the imbalance between supply and demand. And this morning, there's also new pushback coming from outside Capitol Hill. The American Society of Civil Engineers actually slamming the idea of a federal gas tax holiday, saying it will strip billions in revenue right now slated for highway and infrastructure repairs. And the White House actually confirming that, saying it's actually about $10 billion, but adding they can find the money elsewhere. Hoda. And Maggie, Savannah and I would like to officially welcome you <laughs> to the Today Show. Uh, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Let's go now to the overnight drama in the World Aquatic Championships. Yes, American artistic swimmer Anita Alvarez passed out in the water during her routine and had to be rescued by her own coach. NBC national correspondent Miguel Almaguer has been following these overnight developments. Miguel, good morning. Hi, Savannah. Good morning. Alvarez was competing in the solo free final, an artistic swimming event, when she suddenly dropped to the bottom of the pool. Her coach saw what was happening, happening dramatically dove into the pool, fully clothed, and pulled off a life-saving rescue. Well, a very determined swim there from Anita Alvarez. Frightening moments for an American swimmer who fainted while competing at the 2022 FINA World Aquatic Championships last night in Budapest, Hungary. Team USA artistic swimmer Anita Alvarez was performing her routine in the finals when she began sinking to the bottom of the pool. It looks like she's having problems. Her coach, Andrea Fuentes, watching the routine unfold, can be seen initially smiling from the sidelines before she realized something had gone terribly wrong. The coach is actually diving into the pool to, uh, to get her out. Quickly jumping in the pool to save the 25-year-old. Really Two people concerned. are in the pool. I mean, we, we obviously can't see the pictures at the moment but they are getting her out. The dramatic rescue photographed underwater. The coach, she reacted very, very quickly indeed. She's an Olympic swimmer herself. Fuentes later releasing a statement on the USA Artistic Swimming Instagram page, saying Alvarez was seen by doctors. Anita is okay, she writes. All vitals and everything is normal. This is not the first time Alvarez fainted during competition. Last year, she briefly lost consciousness at the Olympic qualifying event in Barcelona, where she was also rescued by Fuentes. Alvarez's father spoke to Craig about the incident last year. You could see the face on her, and the face just wasn't, wasn't something you want to see on your child's face, and that was, that was hard. The head coach writing incidents like these happen in other high endurance sports. Marathon, cycling, cross country. We have all seen images where some athletes don't make it to the finish line and others help them to get there. Our sport is no different than others, just in a pool. We push through limits and sometimes we find them. Miguel, we heard the coach saying she didn't think the lifeguards were doing anything. Were there lifeguards on duty? Why didn't they respond more quickly? Well, Savannah, that's a big question people are asking right now. Alvarez's coach told a Spanish radio program she decided to dive in because she saw the lifeguards were not jumping in and actually seemed paralyzed and dumbfounded. She even shouted at them at one point, she says, but they were not responsive. Luckily, Fuentes got in in time just to bring her back to safety. Mm. Savannah. Incredible. All right, Miguel, thank you so much. And the fact that she had done it before. I mean, it's a high endurance sp sport. They hold their breath, breath right, while exerting water. themselves. Right, and it's happened. Yeah, it's happened once before, but wow. wow. Thank God for that coach. Okay. I'm sure she knew right away there was something, something that wasn't wrong. right. I'm yes. jumping in. I have a cute boost for you. So a lot of toddlers are already fussing to get out of their uh, safety suit seat as soon as the car stops. But this one gives mom a happy greeting every single time she opens the door. Hello. 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 I think I'd spend my morning in the driveway. <laughs> I know. Opening, closing, opening, closing. <laughs> all right, you watch that all day. Um, and how nice to get that beautiful ring every time you open Hello. the door.
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We are back with a story featuring someone we love dearly here at Today. Yeah, as one half of the Home Edit, Clea Shearer has inspired people to get organized, and now she's got a brand new mission, doesn't she? Yeah, an important one. After finding a lump during a self-exam in February, Clea was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer. And this morning, she's sharing her story for the first time on television, and she's also announcing an initiative that she hopes will save lives. I'm going to try and do a rainbow lineup of books up here. Yeah. Clea Shearer has made a career of conquering clutter. You want to be able to like either need it, use it, or love it. Alongside her home edit co-founder, Joanna Teplin, she's built an empire organizing the closets and pantries of celebrities and regular clients, even us here at Today. What happened? Oh How did you God. do this? But in February, just weeks after her 40th birthday, everything changed. I know you guys live for the Lazy Susan. We yeah. love. <laughs> Clea was in New York to appear with us on Today when she felt a lump in her breast. We had so much to celebrate. Our TV show, the trailer was just released. Our show was coming out April 1st. Um, we had a magazine launch. We had You're on top of the world. We had so much goodness. But when I felt that lump, I just was like, I can't put this off just because life is too good. Her OBGYN told her it would be months before she could get an appointment, but Clea was determined and pushed to get checked by another doctor. The test confirmed she had cancer. You saved your own life. Yes. By knowing your own body, mm -hmm. trusting yourself, and not letting it go. Correct. I would be in a really different place right now if I had postponed what I knew was something. I didn't know that it was gonna be cancer, but I felt something, if I hadn't done that, I have no idea what stage my cancer would be in. Um, although I'm terrified, absolutely terrified of chemo, I am not terrified of a plan. Through a double mastectomy and chemotherapy, Clea has documented every step in candid videos and posts for her millions of Instagram followers. And I had to like wipe the hair from my head. You've been really honest. You know, some days are good, some days are not. I think that one thing that I've realized about breast cancer is it really, it attacks your femininity in such ways that we don't even know that we're attached to. But, you know, there are other things that are really beautiful about it too. All my scars feel like strength, like they, they feel like battle wounds. Did you know you had this within you? Nope, I sure did not. Um, I definitely thought I was more of a delicate flower <laughs> than I am. But, you know, I think that that's, it's been a real learning for me. I surprise myself with the things that I'm able to do. So have you organized any medical offices, doctor's offices, chemo rooms? I mean, you're still being clear, right? I'm still being myself. My, my daughter actually, with her therapist, made a list of all the things that have changed and all the things that have stayed the same. And in the stayed the same, my mom still organizes by the rainbow. You know, she, she can't help herself. Have you been surprised at the outpouring and how much love and support and well wishes you have received? I have been surprised by that. I didn't really anticipate kind of the rolling 
impact that it would continue to have. The piece that I find the most incredible, though, isn't just the outpouring of love, but it's the outpouring of stories. The huge amount of people who have now, unfortunately, found cancer in their own body and wouldn't have um, if I hadn't kind of rang the bell about it. I so appreciate the love. Now she's hoping to help even more people, launching the Clea Shear Breast Cancer Research Fund. Our goals are really raising awareness for self-advocacy and making sure that screenings are available to women everywhere. And ultimately, the way to cure cancer is through research. And, you know, hopefully this fund helps propel that research forward. I'm not going to get to the other side of cancer and be like, well, I did it. This is going to be a piece of my life forever. And I think that just making my cancer count is what brings me the most joy. She's really inspiring, and the message that she has is so important because, you know, she did, it, I don't even know if it was a breast self-exam, yeah. technically. She just felt, felt something. something. And here she is. It's, she's on top of the world with all this stuff, and she's like, I can't blow this off because I know it's something. She trusted herself. She calls the docs. They're like, oh, we'll get you in in a few months. And That's she amazing. says, no. No, I need to get it checked out. And I think that is, you know, I, I, I'm so um, inspired by that because mm -hmm. I think if it had been me, I'd been like, well, I guess then I'm it's probably fine. fine. Okay. Right. You know, exactly. you want to just blow it off and think yeah. it, sweep it under the rug. And if she had, she'd be in a lot worse place. When they had the double mastectomy, they found out actually it's stage two cancer. Wow. Mm -hmm. And for her, I mean, we knew she was a giving person just because that's her nature. But to see her right now, she's still going through treatment. She's got a foundation. Like yeah. she's she's busy. She's she's staying that way. She is. I mean, she's totally determined yeah. to make something yeah. good come of this by telling this story, by yeah. being really honest about it. She said, you know, she said, I shaved my head and I thought I was being proactive. She said, but when my hair started falling out, it broke her heart. It was yeah. really, really tough. So there are high moments, there are low moments. And then all the people who determined. found their cancer yeah. because she told her story. Like she's I think a, that's the whole, that's everything. Yeah. Making her ca cancer count. Yeah, definitely. She's got still a long road ahead. Yeah. You know, she's just in the first phase of chemo. She's got two more phases. Yeah. She's going to have yeah. radiation. Mm. But she's really positive. Man, oh if a God. positive yeah. attitude can no kick kids. cancer, yeah, yeah. then it has no chance because yeah. yep. Clea is wow. incredible. And wow. if you want to learn more about this research fund that she's starting, cool. you can go to today.com. It's great. Right. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Jackson now weekdays at 5 on NBC News now top story with Tom Yamas weeknights at 7 on NBC News now we are back with our series the upside and there's a science lab in North Carolina where stem and sports are in full swing and our senior national correspondent Carrie Sanders is live to show us how it works I'm excited for this one Carrie well, good morning, guys. Look, what kid after school doesn't like to get a ball, a glove, and maybe a bat and get some friends and go knock it around? Well, the idea of playing a game and, yes, discovering that there is science behind the game is 
actually there. But how do you get kids interested in that? Well, it's become a mission now for a company in North Carolina called SAS. And the reason they've taken this on, linking this game to science, is because they know our economy going forward is demanding more experts in science, technology, engineering, and math. In school, they call that STEM. I've been to multiple batting cages just to kind of help my swing, but not one that tells me how. 12 year old Avery Smades and 11 year old Luis Rivero excitedly step to the plate. But this is about more than just swinging the bat. I have absolutely no baseball background. I've never played in any of organized baseball, but I understand that players seem to look and do certain things. Here in the batting lab, principal data scientist Jared Dean and his team at SAS are quietly hoping to get kids to a different base to get young minds interested in data. The point of the SAS batting lab is to help kids love data as much as they love baseball and softball. SAS is targeting kids between ages 10 to 14. It's hoped merging sport with data literacy leads to a new understanding of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. It gives us like diagrams and charts and graphs to show us what part of our swing has the most room for improvement. Ideally, you want your hands to stay ahead of your back elbow. As we saw, it's working. Yeah, I would say that they are tricking me. Just do some math a little bit. Batting cage has helped me a lot because I had this game and I hit a double and I didn't even try. I probably could have gone over the fence if I actually tried. I think this cage has definitely helped me improve on the softball field, not only like with my timing and hitting the ball, but also with my confidence. To create the cage, SAS worked with coaches and players from North Carolina State University's baseball and softball teams. What makes a good swing and what we're looking for is athleticism. Athleticism, balance, coordination, specifically to a baseball swing is, is balance and rhythm and timing. After analyzing thousands of players' swings, SAS's data teams discovered at bat, there's one key metric of success, exit velocity. In kids speak, how hard the ball is hit. Every player in the program has improved their maximum velocity. Most are in that 10 to 15% improvement range over the first six sessions. Equipped with cameras and thousands of sensors, the batter's box monitors how a person's weight moves during a swing and detects when the ball is hit. It's about 50,000 data points in all per swing. And then we send that off and we compare it to those hundreds or thousands of swings that we had collected prior, and we look for deviations. The goal, a better swing, but also the kids learn how analytical skills and data can be applied to sports and beyond. We don't need students to grow up to be data scientists. We need them to be data believers, people who believe that if they're going to strategically solve a problem, that data is a component of that. The folks at SAS say the batting lab is already a home run. The proof, young Avery, who now sees how STEM fits into just about everything, even her dreams of being a veterinarian. Data kind of ties into just doing everything right as a vet. But for now, she'll keep her eye on the ball and swing for the fences. So you don't have to be in North Carolina at the batting cage to pick up some of these skills because they've actually put this playbook online so kids can go online and practice this and pick up some analytical skills. And guys, who knows, playing a game may actually lead to the next sure. rocket scientist. That's cool. Well, that's what's know. so cool when you make it fun. You know, and as I played softball since I was five years old, yeah. and, you know, as a meteorologist, it's like math and science and sports. It's, well, I love this together. idea. This is fantastic. It's great. Thanks, Thanks Carrie. Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical turn point for this fire. And good evening from...
from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, so what do Oprah Winfrey... Donatella Versace and Vice President Kamala Harris all have in common. Maya Rudolph. <laughs> Go girl. <laughs> now the Saturday Night Live veteran and four-time Emmy Award winning actress four times is starring in a new show that was written just for her. It's called Loot. In it, she plays a billionaire going through a public divorce who was forced to take on a second act as a philanthropist. Take a look. Since I'm new here, I thought... I don't really know everyone yet, and what better way to do that than with a fabulous bonding retreat? Okay, I don't even know what's happening right now, but we can't just fly to Miami on a random Tuesday, especially when we have a meeting with Councilmember Saldana today. Oh, I had Nicholas call her. We're moving it to a Zoom. I hate Zooms. I don't get to show off my personality. How the hell are they going to see my sweet side? Oh, my God. Uh, that's <laughs> Come on, Maya. This is, a, first of all, great concept. It gives you, like, all your running room. Exactly. Uh, tell me what you loved about playing this I role. Mean, when, you, <laughs> when you hear billionaire, you just think, like, oh, we can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Sky's the limit. Yeah. And, yes, I did think costumes. I was <laughs> yeah. very excited really? about yeah. costumes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love all of that. And it's just, like... I love a larger than life character, yeah. obviously. You know, you you know, Donatella is like well, you know, when I was doing Donatella, like that's like you get to live in those worlds. It's so fun. Are you gonna wear a lot of wigs? I know you love wigs. I do love yes. wigs. Yes. No, we actually use my hair for this. Oh, one. okay. Yeah. We, we we use this old thing. <laughs> you know, we just showed a clip of or the, you with the vice president Kamala Harris playing the role of her. Now I always wondered if you guys ever run into the people and what they say. I just met her in real life for the first time. I, I was lucky enough to do a, a, a Zoom with her pre-election. Yeah. yeah. Um, but boy, oh boy, I what just was got, that like? It was heaven. I, I, I'm so in awe of her. Um, and what an incredible thing when you get to meet someone that you're that you're you respect so much mm -hmm. and is and is better than what you thought could possibly. Were you be. nervous about her reaction to? No, I knew she liked oh, okay. it. Okay. And like, and you know, the truth is, and, we, and she and I talked about it. My interpretation of her is is loving, loving yeah, I, yeah, because yeah. how do you do her? Like, what's the thing that she does? She do something? Well, she's always she's always unless she's really like you know breaking something yeah. down. She's having fun, yeah. Yeah. a lot. Yeah. She's she's full of life yeah. and she loves to laugh and she mm -hmm. loves to smile. But she's also incredibly direct. If mm -hmm. you need her to be direct, she's powerful. Mm -hmm. She's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So anytime I play a character that's like even like. A anything to do with gorgeous, I just give them a Beyonce fan. So we, <laughs> we gave do? her a Beyonce fan. So we'd love to see you when you come back to SNL. It's oh just, just heaven. And I know you have your tang, your SNL tang. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you know, you know the, the, the moniker. Yes, I do. <laughs> and you guys keep up regularly with each other? We do, yeah. yeah. I'm actually going to uh, get to see my friend Rachel Dratch in oh, POTUS. She was nominated oh. for a Tony. Oh, oh my right. gosh. So amazing. And I'm just, I'm so grateful that I found, you know, these uh, people in my 20s that I had this incredible experience with and we we still share life you know talking about kids being parents and well you're the earth mother I heard yeah. to that group I yeah, heard yes. that too and I'm very flattered I think it's because I drink matcha and like <laughs> I'm the one that lives in California and takes all the herbs yeah, yeah. Well, you love you love singing I love watching you yeah. sing on on SNL and your kids love to sing yeah and so mom. what's what's happening oh wait can I just for one second yeah talk to I me. was in the dentist office the other day and I came finally. I saw you playing this on the show. Who are you playing it for? You. I'm playing it for you. Oh. <laughs> and no, this was my lullaby song. My parents, my parents used to play for me. So sweet. What, is, what do you feel like when you hear it? It's a, oh, that, what a pretty picture of my mama. It's beautiful. Oh. You know, it's weird how sense memory transports you mm -hmm. back to something instantly. That's just, I'm a kid. But I was a baby. When they wrote that song, I was, I was not even one. 
and we were living in Gainesville, Florida, because that's where I was born, and they used to put me in this little, like, automatic swing thing on the porch so they could go out, <laughs> out back and hang out, and they would just play this song. Before they had any words for it, it was just a lullaby for me, but it was my mom and dad wrote it together, and, I mean, what an unbelievably beautiful couple and, like, just creatively together. It's really You lost special. her when you were seven, so yeah. what yeah. part of her do you hold in your heart that is that you carry forward? Mm -hmm. I never imagined I'd have four children yeah. that are part my mother. Mm -hmm. You know, I never imagined, you know, when you're a kid and you lose a parent, it just seems, and especially a parent who people are aware of, yeah. you know, I felt like I had like a red letter on me, like everybody knew. You know, I never imagined this life where I would be lucky enough to be a mom to these incredible kids and learn how to be a mother without having my mom here, mm -hmm. although I have the most incredible father mm -hmm. who taught me everything. He's my everything and my stepmother. They're, okay. they're incre I'm very lucky. Do I'm very lucky. Do know that song, Loving You? Oh, yeah, they sing it. They all sing it, and they don't even think they're good musicians, and they're all they're all wow. musical. It's in them. God. When your oh, kids yeah. are singing your mom's song, yeah. I mean, I don't know what else there That's, is. Oh, that, that that one does yeah. kind of kill me. Yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah, it's we love we love you, by the yeah, way. We love I love you, you too. Thank you're you so by. sweet. Thank you. Oh, okay, loot starts streaming tomorrow on Apple TV yay, Plus. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was awesome. Great yes. show. Will you join us tomorrow? Conan Gray is going to rock our plaza. That's a great way to close out the weekend. Start your weekend. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, like, you know, I almost got out of this one That's clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. And I'm starting to find a little confidence in the kitchen. Today, Chef Jet Tila is going to bring the heat and teach me a few tricks for an easy at home barbecue. We'll be making pulled pork sandwiches with an Asian apple slaw, plus a side of hearty cornbread. I am feeling ready to tackle this one. So let's get started. I'm so happy you're here. It's great to be here. I'm glad that you want to learn to teach me foundational stuff because I don't know anything. Have you heard? I don't buy that, Savannah. Oh. I've been watching you cook and come. you've come a long way. So what do we do? What's our All plan? Right. Our plan for today is season the pork, sear the meat before braising, cut the vegetables and mix the dressing for the slaw, make and bake the cornbread, shred the pork, assemble the sandwiches, plate and serve. Our barbecue brothers are gonna get mad at us yes. for calling this barbecue. We are um, creating a version of barbecue in the house by braising. Barbecue technically is smoking something for a very long time until okay. it breaks down. Okay, no okay. smoking. Braising is, like, what does that mean, really? Very simply stated, we're gonna take a tough cut of meat mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to cook it uh, slowly with a little bit of liquid so all of the toughness breaks down. Uh, we're gonna cook the crap out of we're it. We're gonna cook the crap out of it okay. and make it delicious. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mince an onion. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, mince. I don't know if I've minced before. Have you diced? Oh, yes. It just means smaller dice. Okay. That's all it means. This is one thing I learned. Show me. When you have a round thing, do you, you gotta oh, make oh, a flat side. Oh, let me show side. you another way. So can you cut down? Yeah. But not all the way through. Okay, yes. Just okay. Leave, it, leave it connected. I gotcha. Like this. Okay. You're totally killing it. I'm. My, what a sharp knife this is. <laughs> Isn't that sharp though? For yeah. Real? It does make it easier, assuming you don't cut yourself. Now we're gonna come inwards now. You see, we're gonna follow the lines. Yeah. Okay. You lead with a tip down, and then and then rock. You know that rocking oh, motion? Oh yeah. See? Okay. Oh yeah. See how that yeah. feels? Yeah. Uh -huh, I do. You're a great cook. It's just all about believing you're a great cook. You're, you're killing it. You are a sweet talker. No, nope, it's the truth. Look what you're doing. You're gonna make me cry, or maybe <laughs> it's just the onion. Yeah, okay. it's definitely the onion, definitely okay. the onion. Are these mincy enough? Those are beautifully mincy. And we're gonna teach you to do a dry rub. So dry rub is basically a 
a seasoning mix that yep. goes on a uh, piece of beef for barbecue. We're gonna apply it to the braise. Okay. Uh, so brown sugar. Brown sugar. How about? Oh, you're one of those. Put a piece of bread in the brown <laughs> sugar. How much? Uh, we're gonna go three, two, one. So three tablespoons. Okay. So salt, two. Okay. And again, that you can. That's eat. a lot of salt, and this is coarse salt. I see. Uh, I mean, I know it seems like a lot of salt, but it is for four pounds of pork butt. I like paprika. Mm -hmm. That was coriander. Okay. That was ground coriander. This, this is, is like garlic. garlic powder. Yeah. yeah. The one pepper. Yeah, one pepper, yeah. You can either whisk it or stir it or whatever you want. Look at that. You just made a driver, so you gotta just taste everything. Even the rice. Go easy, you can go easy if you want. Oh, but it's delicious. What do you think? I Isn't like that it. nice, sweet, a little bit of um, savoriness. Nice. Then we're gonna use you <laughs> pork butt. I like to say pork behind. <laughs> you know, my mother watches this show. That's right, that's right. There, you, okay. grab it, you grab it, open it. We'll talk about the actual yeah. muscle. Pork yeah, booty. Want, pork booty. <laughs> All right, so pork let, rear end. There are so many words for that part of isn't the anatomy. Isn't there? Um, pork, pork tushy. The irony is it doesn't even come from that part of the pork. It doesn't? No. Well, why do we call it pork to uh, So if you look at the shoulder here, right, of, of the four, the yeah. four end, the four inch shoulder. Two hoofs. Two here. hoofs right here. So this is, um, uh, there's two shoulders, there's two pork shoulders, mm -hmm. right? The lower part is called the picnic, which is more the upper arm, okay. right? And this is actually up here. It's the most versatile, in my opinion, uh, cut of the pork because it's got the perfect fat ratio. Mm -hmm. It's got perfect connective tissue. It's great for this. Okay. And what we're gonna do is cut it into six equal pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna take my butt right here. <laughs> <laughs> take that butt. Oh wait, we haven't had a sip. Uh, we always drink on starting from scratch. Cheers. Cheers to cheers you. Cheers to you. We're drinking a... Um, French 75. This is my wife's play on it. Um, nice. It's a hibiscus flower. So gin, honey, mm. hibiscus, and champagne. That Cheers is to you. delicious. Cheers. And to Mrs. Tila. To, uh, to all family. Yes. Yeah, those will get you in trouble. Woo! Super easy to drink. All right, we're liquored up. Let's get the knives and the yeah, pork out. So really I'm just going to cut six equal pieces. Yeah, you can do it that way. You can do it this way. Well, what would three. you do? I would, I, so in my mind, I'm always thinking a, a tile becomes a slice, a slice becomes a dice. That's like my overarching guidelines. So it's a tile mm -hmm. right now, right? Okay. And the tile becomes a slice, which is all two long pieces, and then the slice becomes a dice. And look at you. You got six pieces right there. Even knife cuts are critical for even cooking. The tile becomes a slice, yep. which then becomes and a then the dice. And then the slice becomes a dice. And do it thrice. <laughs> there One, you go. One, two, three. See, look at that. Okay. And that way, um, you kind of, uh, it's a regiment mm -hmm. to, to tell yourself how to cut things. That's gorgeous. Is this though. good? Yeah, that's These perfect. guys aren't too big? Okay. Nope, not at all. I'm following your lines, but okay, this yeah. is fun. So now the spice robe. I like to kind of season in this tray. Show me your technique. I, I'll do one. So I'm like, I'm not being shy. Like, mm -hmm. I can, you can use all, all these. There's sides. one way. Here's another way to do it. Let's it, go to town. Good. Can I ask a dumb question? There's no such thing, oh, Savannah. Sorry, another We're dumb not question. Dumb question alert. There dumb question <laughs> alert. Well, like, could you ever, it's so tasty. Could I put it on a vegetable? A thousand percent. Okay. Is now, would fine? you like sprinkle the rest? You wouldn't want to. Go, go, go. Yeah, I like go. to just sprinkle. Get See? in there. Um, okay. It's about feeling your way through it. And mm -hmm. if you didn't taste that rub, yeah. you wouldn't, you'd be a little nervous to apply some. Right. Here. Okay. Like we can wash I'm, hands. Since wash we hands. touched raw pork, yeah. I will I clear and wash hands. Raw How's pork, that rub. We're okay. doing great. And I'm going to crank up uh, your Dutch oven mm -hmm. and get that going. Let's talk about braising really quick. First thing we're going to do. <laughs> All right, don't leave me hanging, girl. Here. Cheers. Cheers. Sorry. Together. I just want to celebrate every step. Perfect. Okay. Um, first step is always going to be browning your protein. Okay. Right? Uh, Hot pan. This is not there. a cast iron. This is a oh, no. Dutch Say oven. It. Uh, it is. So I put those two together. It is a cast iron Dutch oven. Oh, okay. How's Great. That Lovely. Yeah. Um, enough oil. You can measure if you want, but I'm. I, well, you, for me today, we're going to cook by feel. Okay. I like that. Now, it's hot. Do it's, I wait for the oil to get hot and start bubbling or anything? You know, you can always wait for a little bit of white smoke. Yeah. You can actually do a test. So why don't you take a piece and kind of touch it. Mm -hmm. And if you hear the shh, we're in good shape. It's not a very wide tongue. Right? Okay. Here, Lou. You hear the shh. I hear it. I totally now, how hear many, it. like, am I, is this a don't crowd the pan situation? This is cold. This is hot. It's always don't crowd a pan situation when you're browning something. Let's okay. talk about some basics while we're waiting for the brown. Number one, uh, don't we don't mess with it. Another thing we're building, a concept of fond. Have mm -hmm. any of your chefs talked fond. about F-O-N-D, fond? No, fun, fun. but not fond. Yeah, fond. Yeah. Fond. fond is fun. Fond. It's a fabulous. What is it? Um, if you lift that piece up and we mm -hmm. look into the pan, you see the bits that are sticking? 
Yes. Those are going to become beautiful crispy bits mm. that later we're going to pull up and incorporate into the sauce. Okay. Think about Fonda's foundation of flavor. Girls just want to have fun. That's exactly okay. right. Now, is this one of those deals That's where you gorgeous. sear on all sides? Is, is, you want and I'm going to have to prop it up? Yep. Okay. Look at that. Look at that guy. That is now that's we're talking. exactly what we want. Let's get the next Let's contestants up. Absolutely. Can I put it right back on I here? I totally think you can. I think that's going to be somewhat controversial out in the world. Okay. But remember, team, at 165 degrees, yeah. everything is, is And sanitized. just relax, everybody. It's yeah. just a T-Live. I like he knows what he's doing, See? okay? So don't get all worked trust up about it. Trust us. Trust. Don't trust me. No, trust, but trust Savannah. Him. Okay, these look good. Let's start building flavor. So okay. how about a little bit of that onion okay. first. Now you can start scraping that okay. fond. Scraping up the bits is releasing of the fond. There you go. It sounds, more, it sounds sexier, doesn't it? Release the hounds. Release the hounds. Okay. We're going to make the braising liquid now. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to do red wine. Okay. Okay. Um, and you could be any alcohol, but yeah. red wine is going to go with this kind of darker, richer braise. Okay. So whenever just, you're doing alcohol, just a really good tip because this might be hot and it might flare. There's a small chance. So take a half step back. I like to just put the lip of the bottle here oh. and just pour away. I yeah. don't know what it uh, cup Enough is. to kind of coat the bottom. Like, See how we're almost at the that bottom? Is that good? Now we're coated the bottom. That's it. Good? Okay. See how easy that I is? I do. Okay. Yeah. And now you can scrape. Use that. Now you've deglazed. You're officially deglazing. Deglazing yeah. all the day long. Once you feel this pan smooth, yes. you've done a great job releasing the font. You're done. Okay? Okay. Um, now we're going to build liquid more. Okay. All right. And uh, this is fun. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Cola is excellent for braising. I will stand on I, that. So is that next? Cola? Yeah, that's next. Yeah. Crack that can okay. and give us about a half cup or a cup. The carbonation. The caramel, the sugar, the phosphates. I mean, that's so interesting. Isn't that fun? Do you think that's enough? Beautiful, right there. How fun. Right? Um, and now... Did you I, just make that up? No, no. I use cola to braise carnitas, to braise uh, short ribs. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you think about the, the flavor of, of, of the cola. Yeah. Now, all right. Now we're going to add the, the pork back in, and we're going to add okay. more liquid. Okay. But we need a visual cue. We need to know okay. how much. So now, am I going to put all of these guys now, in Now, all here? of it goes in now. It does, Because okay. we're not worrying about crowding the pan. Mm -hmm. See the rate of boil? Yes. I want to simmer. There's hardly One any more. room for this big old that's, piece of butt. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. Our fundamentals of braising. Liquid can never be higher than halfway up the protein. Okay. Okay, so that knowing that, we need barbecue sauce. Am I All tasting right. the barbecue sauce? I think, remember, Jatila says taste every taste layer. Taste everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, taste everything. So knowing, I'll get rid of mm, it. I like that. And am I going to stir it around so it's yeah, everywhere? Yeah, perfect right there. You think we're halfway up the biggest pieces of protein yet? I don't know. I don't want to get the wrong answer, but I'm going to say... I'm going to say yes. I say we're almost there. Okay. Because, okay, now we're going to account for three hours of braising okay. and some reduction. Mm -hmm. So maybe a, a touch of chicken stock. Okay. A touch of chicken stock. So chicken I don't need too much. No. The chicken stock just sort of to get us to the level we want. That's exactly right, okay. Tina. That's All exactly right. right. We're done. Okay. But don't I need to stir it up or Just anything? a little bit. Because you know what's going to happen? At 325 degrees, mm -hmm. it's going to simmer in, in the pot. So it's This looks stir. amazing. I'd eat it right now. I'm to the oven it goes. Away. 325. I want to make sure that the uh, the brazier is in the middle of the oven. So set your rack oh. so when the when it's in, it's right in the middle. Okay. And then see you later, braze. Bye. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We got Smell three good. hours to kill. What should we do? Uh, I think we need to make the Asian apple slaw. Okay. Which are basically in a cook's in a cook's mind, just how to make coleslaw. Okay. But we're gonna start with a, about a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. All right. What does slaw taste like to you? Flavor, yeah. Um, like hot, little, sour, salty, sweet, or savory. Uh, Ooh, yeah, like acidity. Yes, yeah. Why don't right. we start with sweet? Okay. And again, uh, we're so gonna. Do you put a little using, honey? How much? I'm gonna go two tablespoons here. Do you know your your um, your your conversions yet? How many teas into a table? Of course, I don't. No big deal. We're just gonna learn one today. Okay. I think three teas to the table. Oh, you know what? I huh. never knew that, and I've always wanted to know that. There you go. So, uh, we've got soy sauce and sesame oil. Okay, that's one, a tablespoon. One each. Okay. One each. And I'm using soy sauce here because it creates salt, creates um, a little bit of umami, the mm. savoriness. If you don't want a soy sauce, go salt. Okay. Now, sesame oil, same thing, one tablespoon. One cup of rice vinegar now. Oh, okay. We're going to work that in slowly. I'm going to get the lumps out. That's wow, dressing. that's nice. All we right. taste it. But it's so important. Ooh, I love that. Is that nice? Toasty, yummy. Oh okay. my gosh, I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you wanted more sweet, you know where to go. If you want more salt, you know where to go. Yes. Again, intuitive cooking. Chop, chop time. Uh, I'm going to start with the cabbage. Okay, this is the intimidating cabbage. We've had we've had some issues with cabbage before. Talk to me. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Put it down, put it down, put it down. Put it down. Yeah, tame the beast. If it's tame the beast, then it rolls around on us less. Okay, woo! If I were to think about everything as tile, slice, dice, yes. I would think this is the tile. Okay. And then what if this was the slice? Okay, I'm not sure I understand that. So but me, okay. I'm just saying like half the half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. This is the spine of the knife, mm -hmm. right? You're bunched up against the board. If you took a half step back, mm -hmm. you give yourself more room to breathe. Mm -hmm. And if you made sure that spine was flat, mm -hmm. think about perpendicular, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. always gonna have straight cuts. Oh, you're just sort of using, I'm just a using visual guide. Yeah, that's it. It's, a, it's a, like see. a landmark. Okay. Julianne apple. Julianne apple. We're looking for about that eighth to quarter of an inch pieces. Is this it? That I'm doing these round slices? Yeah, okay. because uh, the, we're going to end up with a matchstick. Oh, so we'll okay. take that round slice, which and is And then our, make little matchsticks. That's oh, it. Oh, I see. Okay. I lay them on top of each other. The stack height is totally up to your comfort level. Okay. And then what I do is lay them up, and then same thing. We're uh -huh. done with apple. Okay, good. And now we're going to go to carrot. I flatten round things. Boom, like that. Mm -hmm. And then I lay them on the flat side. Mm -hmm. Now that, that keeps us from getting cut. Okay. And, and a carrot's gonna give you a lot of resistance. Tile slice, dice. Tile slice, that dice. That means first mark it out, yep. then slice it, then chop it up a little That's it, because... Okay, now I see what you mean. So now we can toss it, right? Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Would have been good if we had a bigger bowl, though, right? <laughs> so I would do just a good pinch of salt. You mean then... salt and then turn, salt yeah, and turn. exactly. Oh, just a good, a good thing of salt right now. Done. And then we'll turn. And turn it. But that's not going to make it all too salty? Like no, nope. that's more. perfect right there. Yeah, because that's why we tasted the dressing first. Yes. So we know kind of how much salt we need. Mm -hmm. That looks awesome, Savannah. Okay, this really does look good. I think it. we can sesame now. Just um, like sprinkle, Yeah, just sprinkle. Zh, 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 and then do another toss. Okay, good? Yeah, looks okay. beautiful. Yes. So we're going to let it chill a little bit. Chill. Yes, chill, chill. Chill. See okay. you later. Bye-bye. Bye, bro. From New Orleans, well, nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? It feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Pull pork's braising. Yep. Oh, we're almost there. Uh, the slaw is relaxing. And then we're going to get to cornbread. I like to break it into different um, components. So we're going to okay. do dry, wet cream butter. So we got the flour. Yeah, so why don't you throw cup of in um, a cup of cornmeal. Yeah. Here you do want to measure. Yes. Right? And That's one thing I do know from baking. Yeah. You kind of have to be on it. Okay. There you go. Four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Um, you got it. And okay. I usually consider um, salt a dry... Uh, uh, yeah, I would. But here's a good tip. Like, usually when you're creaming butter, uh, sugar's not a dry. Like your cookie recipe. Sugar right? goes with the liquids. There it is. Okay. One teaspoon kosher salt. Okay, you these it. are dry. Whisk them. Let's whisk them together. Okay. Now, you're going to do the wets now mm -hmm. in uh, that large measuring bowl. Okay, so. You're going to start with eggs. Uh, one thing I learned is you don't do it on the edge. Yes. So that was one thing. Look at you, man. Mm -hmm. You got this. Now, I did yeah. learn on one show how to do the one hand crack. Should okay, I try save, it? Do that, do the, save the last one, please, okay. for one hand. But it's a real messy situation. It's go. not really. Yeah. Like, second hand got in there late. Okay, so work in progress. So let's whisk up those eggs okay. until uh, mm -hmm. totally together where you can't tell if it's white or if it's yolk. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely. And then I'm going to fly in your milk. Okay. There it is. One and two thirds cup. Mm -hmm. Pour it right in. Pour it right in. Whisk that together. Okay. And you basically separated your dries. Mm -hmm. You've got your wets. And I'm gonna bring in the mixer to cream butter. Have you creamed butter? I have not. Okay, this is important. This is a really good concept okay, to learn. Okay, so is this done enough? That's Can lovely. Okay. We'll put it to the side. Oh, I love the mixer. Okay, creaming butter. Yes. Uh, oh, first, do we need to get acclimated with the mixer? I actually know this mixer. Okay, good. I have this mixer. Okay. We're gonna go to the paddle. paddle. It says 12 tablespoons of butter. That's one and a half sticks. Yep, so yeah. save us half a stick for, for, for greasing the dish. Mm -hmm. And I see this is room temp butter. Yeah, which is really important, team. Mm -hmm. that you can't cream butter that's okay. not room temp. Then we need now a cup of sugar. sugar. Yep, okay. a cup of sugar. Low so, first. Low. What we're doing here is using the sugar, mm -hmm. because it's coarse, to whip air into the butter. Okay. That's all we're doing. This is gonna give you a really light, fluffy Fluffy, cornbread. okay. That's period, so now you go higher. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is color. Oh. It's a pale yellow. Uh, it's gonna start to become one fluffy, beautiful mass. Mm -hmm. and it's gonna get even more pale. Now, I can get obsessive about pushing stuff down Which, on the side, should thank, I? Thank you for mentioning it, because it's so important. So let's turn it off mm -hmm. every so often, scrape mm -hmm. down. Scrape down. Okay, good. So it's good to be a freak about this? It's totally when it comes to okay. baking, yeah. when it comes to cooking, absolutely. I do. All so right. now I'm going in. We're whipping and again. I'm going to go straight up to fast, right? Yep. That's it. You're doing it. You could take this time and grease our baking dish. Okay, now I'm like, maybe I should just do this. Done. See, what we're going to do now is work the batter together by alternating dries and wet. Wow, well, okay, so to do a little dry, a little wet. Yeah, maybe a third at a time. Okay, okay here we go, and then we're gonna do this a slow, little. Slow, nice, and really slow, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I don't wanna bit it all in my face. That would be fun, though. Now add a little. Add about a third. See how it just comes together? Now mm -hmm. stop, we'll go alternate oh, okay. back to. Yeah, the whole idea here is good incorporation mm -hmm. without overmixing. Okay. Uh, flour, when overmixed, will create gluten, Gluten will give you a very tight crumb, okay. and we don't want a tight crumb. Never so. want a tight crumb. Boo! Boo tight crumbs. Pour a little this much. Yep, and like you can go about, a little more now. So. Like that? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Should I be spatula Uh I think is this is a good time to maybe stop and give it a scrape down? Yeah, I think so. I have a scrape here. It's just not as bad, yeah. though, because it's liquidy. It's You're doing still. it. Okay. And I think we're at the point now that we're a third. You can just dump, dump it all in. in there. Yeah, for sure. So we're at that point where the batter can handle kind of the rest of the ingredients. Okay. No problem. How do you know that? Uh, I'm looking at the mass it's become, mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's stable. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm looking for. There you go. So How'd you get into cooking anyway? My family immigrated in the 60s. We had restaurants in China. So our grandparents had restaurants, parents had restaurants. There was really it's nowhere in, else for me to go. It's in your jeans. Yeah, it's, it's called not being good in school. No, did you grow up cooking? Yeah, so I worked in our grocery stores as a butcher, as wow. a produce guy. Oh my gosh, that's how you know so much. So I did it all. Get in there and let's get all, okay. all kind of the... Just make sure I really yeah, got it mixed in Really well. kind of a, like use that blade and almost fold. There okay. you go. And now I'm just going to pour it in. Do you have that's any all. pouring techniques? Um, you know, not really. Okay. I, I, I don't. I just try to... 
kind of cover and then tap, tap, tap. And if you're one of those people like chunky cornbread, mm -hmm. like jalapenos yeah. or corn, uh, this is kind of right before we go into the pan. You, mm -hmm. can, you can incorporate all your... Besides what would you put in? I would... Bacon? <laughs> yum. Oven-wise, yes. 400 degrees, okay. 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. After 20, about 20 minutes, I would check with the little cake checker. Yeah. And we've done it. Shall I bake? Let's do it. Well, let's do it. Savannah, we've done so much. Oh my gosh. The slaw is ready to go. We got the cornbread. I think it's time to pull out like the brioche buns and start to build lunch. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go check on the pork. Okay. I'll bring it over. And then here we go. Wow! That looks awesome. It looks incredible. Oh man. Okay. Um, okay. So now we're gonna shred. Right? Shred. Okay. Yeah. Do you allow? Yeah. And I'm cool. putting on my plate. Just put it right on your sheet pan okay. there. All of them are. You take three. I'll take three. Whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. Oh geez, it's falling apart. Yeah. Isn't that? Well, first. Is that a good thing? Let's just enjoy how how I mean, soft and tender that is. It is. Oh my gosh, it's like melting your mouth. Man. This is, this is what braising does. It okay. takes a tough piece of meat and turns it into something that feels and tastes really expensive. Okay. Uh, okay, lots of options here. The double fork thing. Just show me. So it's hurt. literally just shredding. Okay. And oh uh, it's personal preference. I like kind of a, a chunkier pulled pork. Mm -hmm. Allie likes kind of a very fine pulled pork. Okay. So that's that's house rules, what okay. I call house rules. So what is Savannah's house, house rules? The house rules are what Allie says. Yeah, yeah, there Whatever you go. Whatever your wife says, I, I agree with. I just want to eat it right now. <laughs> Just oh, really? Savannah? Put a bib because on. I have your box of spoons. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, I love it. All right, I get to taste it. Yay. You have to taste every layer because okay. it's going gonna, it's gonna to morph a little bit. Okay. Mm. Yes, yes. Really good. Mm -hmm. mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. I like it. So once it's shredded, mm -hmm. um, do you mind putting that barbecue sauce oh, yeah. into all this delicious kind of pan sauce? This whole made? thing? The whole thing goes okay. in. Mm -hmm. I'm just stirring it up, right? You're stirring it up. And then we're gonna marry uh, the pork back into the sauce so it gets almost like another base thing. I Great. can't believe I made this. What are you talking about? It looks so good. You killed. Okay. Savannah, pulled pork is ready. I'm gonna go get the cornbread. cornbread. All right, here we go. I'm gonna drink. <laughs> Ooh, that looks good. Save me some. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. That is pretty. I'm gonna put it on your trivet. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. You can let this cool in the pan. You yeah. can eat it warm. You could flip it out and let it cool and get crispy edges, whatever okay. you want to do. But for today, I think we're just going to serve it as a side. So do you want to carefully take that butter knife and then cut it into squares? Yeah, should I? Yeah. Dial, yeah. Tile slice dice. You go, girl. Yeah, and if you don't mind placing it in this uh, yeah. tin. And we've made honey butter, mm. which is basically room temperature butter. Yeah. Swirled honey in there and a little bit of flake sea salt I mean, on top. That sounds delicious. It's easy to make things fancy. Should we taste? Yeah, we're, you always we have to taste every yeah, layer. Yeah, we don't need spoons for this one. No, here, I'll give you a little Thank bite. Thank you very much. Thank there you. you. Go. Mm -hmm. So good at that. Look at that. Look at the crumb. I mean, the crumb. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, the no crust. Gluten there. What? No, exactly. Yeah. What's gluten? Mm. There's no gluten. Mmm, it's just delicious. Mm. Shall we build? Yes. Okay, so here is the slaw that you made. Okay. Here is, this is a brioche bun. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to do a little bit of uh, sauce. You can go really big if you want. I'm gonna yeah. go manageable today. Me too. Okay. We have yeah. to eat on TV, so we don't wanna be like... <laughs> exactly Okay, right. so you do that. And we'll just do some slaw on top. Okay. And then do you barbecue sauce the top layer uh, or no? Yeah, I totally would. Why I... not? Okay, yummy. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. Making a sandwich, that is something I mm. know how to do. All right, Savannah, look These what look we good. did. That looks excellent. Load them up. Load them up. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to the table and, and, and kind of recap and eat lunch. Okay. All right, we got this. You want to let me give you this? I'll grab this. Okay. Okay. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. 
Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Oh, here we go. Come on. Go. Let's go. Pulled pork. Slaw, cornbread. I mean, this is a perfect summer meal. It really is. Um, also, a lot of techniques to take with you. Yeah, for right. sure. Braising. I mean, that was incredible. Good. Okay, but let's eat. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry with liquid food. Oh, yeah, exactly. I, I can relate. <sighs> you hit me with the piece of cornbread. I got you. Oh, I got to like, try some of that butter, you too. Absolutely. This is my favorite. Really easy to kind of fancy mm -hmm. up. So good. Mm. This cornbread melts in your mouth. Oh man, that that when you cream that butter, man, it just really lightens up this whole thing. Mm. Tell Allie I like her cocktails. Mm. I will. She's invited over. <laughs> this is delicious. Not good. Mm. Mm. I like these plates because they're well, it's a messy kind of. It's like a trough. We need some of those wet towels. <laughs> I'm yeah. into that. Um, you know, it's very barbecue inspired, yeah. right? And these are really inexpensive. Anyone can go to a restaurant supply store, uh, get what these are called, like eighth sheet pans mm -hmm. or quarter sheet pans. Uh, you get some fancy decoration, and it's really just tiny little moments mm -hmm. that, that turn your dinner parties into something fancy. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how good that is. Mm. And you don't have to make a sandwich out of it. You could have just done some coleslaw, some chips, eat that's, with a fork. That's the whole idea here is like mm -hmm. you have a little barbecue lunch without smoking things for 12 hours. Yeah. And the pork is savory, it's sweet, it's kind of luscious, the slaw with the acid. It's really a knockout combination. It's all working. Yum. Jet, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. You are a very patient teacher. No way, you're an outstanding it. cook. Thanks, mm. Savannah. Cheers to us. Cheers to us. Breaks. President Biden calls on Congress to pass a national gas tax holiday to curb skyrocketing prices. Just a little bit of breathing room as we continue working to bring down prices 